Hello everyone, welcome back to Die Party Whiskers and Whiskey week number eight. This is a mouse guard game and uh, boy oh boy are we, are we gonna do some winter today. And we gonna get cold, throw snowballs, probably tiny little mouse snowballs, so they're just like about the size of a seed. It's gonna be cute as fuck, but yeah, anyway. I want to introduce all the people that we're playing with so we can get right into this because I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, up first, we have Mr. Zippy himself. What up, sir? How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Are you are you doing good? I just saw King Arthur. You saw King yeah? Arthur? Yeah, you did? Yeah. Is it? Is, Yo, is, what are your thoughts? Uh, I fucking loved it. I Thank you. I, thank you. I, I thought you great. Law. Um, I thought it was so good. Um, I really wish I saw it in 3D, though. <laughs> I saw it in 3D. It's it's okay. It was okay? Okay. It just seemed like it'd be really good in 3D. I, I really loved... My favorite thing about that was the montage sequences that they had. Yes! Like, Fucking... if there's anything I can take away from that as a GM, it's the montage sequences. Just be like... Have you, have you seen Guy Ritchie's movies before? Um, have you seen Snatch? Or I have Lock, seen Snatch. Yeah, I have. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's it's that guy doing it. But like, that's the first movie that has like medieval heists in it, right? Like, that's like a medieval heist uh, movie. I just said I love Snatch, and then I thought about it. <laughs> yeah, I love Snatch. No, like it's it's super super good. I'm so glad you liked it too. I saw I actually went um, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy, and then got dinner, and Susanna and I were like. That was okay. Do you do you want to see King Arthur? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. We went and saw King Arthur that same night. King Arthur was, was better than Guardians of the Galaxy watching him the same night. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy was okay, but, you know. Uh, King, King Arthur, Arthur was a massive surprise. I was walking in just like, Pendragon, I've heard this story before. What are they going to do to make it interesting? It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, right? Yeah, no, um, they did a good job. It's, good job. it's worth, it's wor definitely worth seeing. It's, oh, it's really yeah, cool. it really is. I would love to have a, like a spoiler cast with you maybe about it at some point, but like, yeah, goddamn, is is that a fun movie? But yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, man. Um, but Zippo, man, Zippy, tell, tell me, man, what have you been up to? It's been like a whole week since we last saw each other. Uh, I have been doing a lot of things. I'm on the tomorrow, I'm going to be doing the final game of the Zork series, uh, for the MS DOS version, Zork mm -hmm. Zero. Uh, and I've been streaming that grind through Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward, getting ready for that Stormblood content. I mean, um, you, like, you finished when I put something in my mouth, I can't do it. But, um, that MMO stuff, I mean, now that I'm doing full-time streaming, MMOs seem, like, super good to me, because it's just like, yeah, give me that content, mm -hmm. I want to do something different. But every time I look at that game, I'm just like, I don't know if you, I can I can it, go that it, deep in Japan, it, you know, like it looks like a grind and it looks like it's like really deep in Japan, but it's not. There's a lot of Star Trek references. Uh Sid, uh he's the classic character through almost all Final Fantasy. Sid and High Wind. He doesn't have High Wind though in this game. He has the Enterprise that he then renames to Enterprise Excelsior. And every time oh he every time he uh flies off, he yells engage. So it's really, really fun. Um, it's, it's, it seems grindy, but you really get into the story and how all the cutscenes are ta tailored to your character and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they even, if you really just want to get up to Stormblood, they have a, a, a new package called the story skip oh. and you can, you I don't, can, I don't know, man. Like anytime they offer like, yeah, get to level 60 right now. I'm like, no, then you're going to give me a character that's like. Fucking his 300 skills. Good luck, fucker. <laughs> exactly. Like, no but uh, if you get into Final Fantasy 14, get on the Exodus server. Uh, me and my guys uh, that we always play with, we're always helping out uh, some of our newer members and whatnot. We always run old content. And if they have any questions, most of us have <laughs> higher levels of the class that they want to play. So we can give mm -hmm. them pointers mm -hmm. and stuff. So that that's what we we do. We try to help uh, players out and offer a really fun environment. All right, 
cool. Uh, I got the collector's edition of 1.0. Wait, is that the one with the cup? Because I got that as well. The very, very first mm -hmm. release of Final Fantasy IV. Yeah, it was dog shit. It was fucking yeah. dog shit. But it's better yeah. now. I would all say it's a lot better now. I, I actually have that character at least. I have that fucking tumbler that it came with. I put my change in that shit. Nice. Yeah, fuck that game. Fuck that yeah, game. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was but really I bad. still have my minimum height in the Cody Paladin. The Cody. I can. little tank. I love it. I I I play Lalafell, and. I am the most cutest Lalafell ever, Shallot. I, and I, I walk around and I flaunt it. I go up to people I don't even know and I just like emote at them and they're just like, <laughs> oh my God. And I've, I've made it like almost law with me that if you're a Lalafell and we make eye contact, I have to slash wave you. And you have to slash wave back or I'm going to follow you. See, I'm the worst MMO player in existence because when I'm like, all right, MMO time, let's make the ugliest dude we can. Nice. Rog, go. go for it. So you That's must have like, you must have like Conan a lot. Conan Exiles or Co oh, Co yeah. oh, Age of Conan. Oh, Age of God, Conan. Man. I actually enjoyed Age of Conan. I enjoyed the, the fucking like, oh, there's a horse on this bridge here. I'm not going to cross. I remember that game. I was a, a bear shaman. Fucking only bears can have bear powers, but it didn't matter. I think I was in boarding school when that came out. Fuck, how oh. old am I? <laughs> as old as you feel, my friend. Oh, great. Now I feel old. Uh, Kika, let's talk to you. You finished that B2 costume yet? 2B costume yet? No, um, I have all the fabric pinned for, for finishing it up, though. Get on it. It's taking longer than I expected because I am, you know, still getting school stuff done. I have to take some summer classes to get some prerequisites out of the way. And I also spent a good bit of last week working on an article that I published recently. Nice. You know, most that's... people have had good things to say about it, except for my boyfriend. He's so negative. <laughs> oh. Punch him Man, in the dick? I don't know. I all so many of my friends are like either grad students or, or still in school sometimes, and like it's just been. I don't envy that anymore. That that life sucks. You know, I haven't yeah, been. That's <laughs> terrible. That's not like I'm I, sorry. I just when you say that, someone's like, oh, shivers like that. No, thank you. That's, oof. Here's here's something scary. The last time I was in school was 11 years ago. Nah, you're in school all the time. Nah, man. Life school is school. Life. The school Damn. hard knocks. Motherfucker, I don't fucking come at me with that shit. All right, I'm supposed to be giving Dude, you. you I'm supposed to be giving you pearls of wisdom, not the other way. <laughs> have you ever spent any time talking to your chat, Henley? Of course, this is high school, and the all and you're the nerd, and your whole chat just hates you. <laughs> just picks wow. on you all the time. Look at him. That is rude. Ah, it's not that bad. I just, I just I just point at a I'm boob and they chat love it. Chat loves you. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then, then you, then you show him some boobs, and then, then it goes away. Yeah, and then it goes away. I'm just like, hey, check out these boobs. Every time. <laughs> well, when okay. I first started out streaming, they, uh, I would, I would get the few troll that would come on, and be like, show me your boobies and whatnot. So I actually have a scene on my OBS that I flash, and it's a pair of blue-footed boobies. Mm -hmm. Someone just once asked me to show them yeah. my bell end, and I had to Google that. Oh boy. <laughs> I guess that works. Okay. I mean I guess that wow. works. They really they really reached deep there for that that pun. Oh, I, did. I don't think right. it was a pun, I think they were just being rude. Oh. So you what else have you been up to, Kiko? Uh I had wisdom teeth extracted. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we did gambit. Did. And you're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mostly just been, you know, article writing, schoolwork, and um, sewing, well, pinning fabric. I have also decided I want to cosplay as Lily from Tekken after I'm done with my 2B cosplay. I don't know who that is. And I found a uh, person I want to commission for doing a photo shoot with a photographer, you know. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, that's, that's about it. Bathroom Nothing too fancy. That. 
All right, uh, Eric, my internet man of fame. What up, sir? How you doing? Boy. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. What have I been up to? How do you not, how do you cheer? Oh, my God. Use the little button next to it. I'm a freaking idiot. Yeah. Okay. You, you caught me when I was trying voice. to cheer and I fucked it up. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, everybody, I'm Eric. I'm doing well. Um, I just played on uh, the Roll20 Con. I did 13th Age. That's right. Shot. Yeah. Really I every I forget how closely connected you are with Roll20. Because every time I see it, I'm just like, what the fuck is Eric doing on the Roll20? Oh, okay. Uh, Roll20. <laughs> Yeah, I keep forgetting I a, that. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could work with Roll20. They seem like such nice people. Despite, yeah, uh, I I know a lot of people. Yeah, That's what it is, just I know a lot of people. I've only talked with one person from Roll20 at TwitchCon 2015, and we were both very drunk at the Monster Cat party. Was it Suzanne? No. It was a was guy. it a guy? It was a yeah. guy. Oh. Fair yes. Enough. At some point, I stole someone's pizza. That's how drunk I nice. was. Nice. Okay, Way that's to totally fair. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So I did that. Uh, I had burning meal today, dude. My apartment's been so freaking hot. Oh yeah. That like I've I've had some trouble yesterday. Yeah. I had literally I felt I had literally had heat exhaustion. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's my whole body was just like fatigued. Like I had muscle joint soreness and like my body like I wouldn't sweat, and I was just dying. <laughs> I, Seattle has not my been eyes pleasant hurt. the past not, couple days. Not at all. I'm not it's been like I'm not, humid and shit. So Poland nor, is normally just bad, man. Like I don't know what it is, but like I've had to feed my dog ice cubes for dinner because he's so fucking hot. <laughs> it's just like, like we live in a northern climate. We live above the tropics. What is this bullshit? <laughs> it's like, all Trump, ah, man. It's Trump's fault. Morning. It's Trump's fault, dude. I. Trump's fault. I want to move to Alaska now. Like, there's got to be a place where the summers only get like you know pretty reasonable. Yeah. Still, this is just too much. You know, I came Anyone to Poland. Tells it was me snowing. That but, um... warming doesn't exist. I'm gonna slap them. <laughs> I swear. It's the same. It's it's the same people who believe that if we use solar power panels on our house, we're gonna use up the sun. It has to be. Wow. That is so... Anyway, so... who's ready to play some Alaska? Yeah. yeah. Let's 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 guard the mice. Yes. Winter. Cool. So, um, it is winter, everybody. Uh, unlike other sessions, this is a this is a cool one. I wish it was um, winter. Winter, yeah, winter has came. Um, <laughs> oh, ew. If you aren't, yeah. Um, if you haven't already, uh, Get consider out supporting. Consider supporting Henley, and so you can have that sweet hensgasm face to go along with that joke. Ah. Oh. Those amazing emotes. Hell yeah, um, man. Yeah, so we are we are we're doing winter. The winter phase in Mouse Guard, rather than in lieu of doing a normal mission, is is a very special time. This is a time when the mice of the territories, the Mouse Guard, uh, return to Lock Haven. And rather than, you know, maybe a skeleton crew stay out in, just in case, but the vast majority of everybody comes into Lock Haven for the for the winter. Um remember we're we're considering this to be like sort of northern Michigan, lower Canada level winters. So blizzards happen on the regular so you're looking at like two feet of snow and as a mouse can you only imagine what that's like right uh, so yeah that's um, that's death man everything yeah so everything stops this is why things are so frenetic the rest of the year because you lose a significant portion of the year mm -hmm. um you lose your winter and um so so when you're in your winter um you spend time um training practicing your stuff and it's also a good time and in the game to to kind of reevaluate our characters our characters get promoted um as well as changed over the course of our year because we've seen a variety of missions now we've seen how a variety of how we handle problems and we're going to develop new wises and traits to reflect that so um that's what we're going to be doing today so we're going to be looking at our, each of our characters and telling stories and recollecting and, and getting new traits and stuff for our characters so it's gonna be fun so the first thing we do uh, first order of business is uh, we have returned to Lock Haven. So now it's to rest and recover. So all your conditions go away. You guys are all healthy. All right. <laughs> I sleep um, for the first time since the start of the game. <laughs> Ser right? I haven't taken no, away time the entire game. <laughs> you kind of have been, haven't you? Well, it's better than being injured the whole game. Yeah. So um, I just imagine him being like, I'm too old for this shit every single session. I have a beanbag that I sleep on, and I, I don't come out of my household 
for three days. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at, th at that point, you you're totally can. So I mean, this is months long, and we're gonna kind of montage it, okay? So um, yeah. after we we've covered all our conditions, the next thing that raises is our nature. So everybody's nature that's been taxed goes back up to refreshed full. So if you're out of like you know something out of something else, you go back to the your cool. current nature I is go equal to, to your two. max nature. <laughs> I go from one to two. <laughs> Great. All right. Cool. Um, so the, once we've rest and rested and recovered, um, we're gonna have a. This is like our first of several montages. This is called practice. Okay, so everybody gets to either mark a pass or a fail, or attempting to learn a skill. Um, if you don't have it for these three different skills, okay. So the first one is a mouse guard skill. So what you might ask, what is a mouse guard skill? On your character sheet, every every skill that was hard coded into your character that wasn't written by yourself is considered a mouth uh, a mouth guard a mouse guard skill. Um, you have over your time during the winter, you have been able to train one of those, and so give yourself a pass or a fail. Or if you're one, I'll start opening and learning a skill at this time. You can, and if that t uh, if your pass or fail dings you up, and you you automatically learn that skill, right? Okay, so what do you need to go from three to four? Is it three passes? Three to four, um, you need, uh, no, you need uh, three passes. To go to three to four, you need three passes and two fails. And so to that's go true, from two to um, three, it's... Two passes and one fail. If you wanted to go from zero to one, you just need one pass, one fail? No. <laughs> uh, to go from zero to one, um, you actually, you have to attempt the skill a number of times equal to your current nature. Oh, okay. So... If I wanted to um, learn instructor and my nature is five, what would I mark on the... Uh... You would have to test um, instructor five times. Okay. So um, just hit pass. Once it hits five, you get instructor and it dings in to level two. The game's okay. like Skyrim. So like the more you try to use skills, the higher chance you level them up faster. Okay, cool. Um, so, yep. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna... I mean, all of my skills went pretty much unused. Aside yeah, from fighter, fighter, which can't level up any higher than six, so nope. Eh. For what it's worth, though, you are like the best fighting mouse in the territories. I, I, well, yeah, the butcher, you are the right? Butcher of Blath again. But it's all, <laughs> but it's almost like fighting everything can't solve all your problems. True that. Almost. I'm gonna put a fail on my orator, so I level up to three. Nice. I imagine that's just oh. a lot of you staring in the mirror and be like, you're talking to me? You're talking to me? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the next the next one we're doing is, um, it's a non-mouse guard skill. It's the same exact thing, you pass, fail, or learn a skill, um, but it has to be one that you you hand um, wrote, wrote down or that's not one of those um, hard-coded skills. All right, uh, I'm just going to put a point in armor. It's just... Is that is that you returning to your forge here? Yeah, pretty much. I'm just gonna sit down and ding out all the dings that I got, you know. For sure. Yeah. Cool. I'll throw, I'll throw one in the lore mouse. Nice. Um, what does that? What do you do with Lockhaven to get lore mouse? Like, what are you doing? So lore mouse is basically, you know, knowing things, right? Yeah, it's talking, talking to it's. Talking it includes to animals. To, yeah. Yes. It includes talking to creatures and learning about their natures and stuff. So, so I'm probably you know I'm I'm in Lockhaven, but I'm probably uh, either reading books on yeah on uh, animals or going out kind of not too far away from the city, but out in the wilderness mm -hmm. to where I encounter them. Makes sense, yeah. And I mean, there's plenty of other like ranger types around as well, so like talking to them too. And also, Mouse Guard, uh, Lockhaven has an extensive library as well. So yeah, that's totally cool. All right, I like the idea that you, even when it's winter, you can't be kept like you feel kind of um, uh, what's the word? Um, home, home crazy, stir crazy, stir crazy. Yeah, stir crazy in your house. Like you got cabin it, you fevery, have to, yeah. cabin. Yeah, cabin fevery. No, quite literally, cabin fevery. Um, that's thank you. Cool. And uh, Kika, what, what were you doing? You did Orator, right? No, no, the Orator yeah. was your first one. So what was what's this one? I think it would be in Ali's, you know, character to do Baker, honestly. 
Sure. Just, you know, her family, her parents are bakers, and if she's feeling homesick, sick, she might practice her baking sort of thing. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, for sure. So you're feeling homesick. Um, so you're, what? just just out of curiosity, what, what, would, what is your favorite baked good? Like, what is... What is Ellie's favorite treat? Baklava. Or what, what do you make when you when you want to relax? Baklava. Maybe not even your favorite, but like, what is uh, your baklava? Yeah. Uh, okay. So you make you make mascar baklava. Cool. Baklava is the best. Yeah. I haven't had one of those though. in a million years. I'm just gonna send that out right now. All right. Well, that there we go. We just gotta send you send you some. I'm sure it'll stay in the mail. If we send it to you, mm. right? Awesome. Uh, we have one last thing to do. Um, we have um, learning a skill. So now, now you can choose something that you have not, you have no ranks in to to take an attempt at. No ranks, huh? Oh, okay. Um, I know what I want to do. Uh, I want to do uh, a mounting skill for uh, riding wild beasts. That would be lore mouse. Riding is lore mouse. So if I wanted to jump, well, convincing onto... them, yeah, convincing them for that stuff. Well, I mean, I mean, mostly just like climbing on animals and stuff like that during combat, like what I was oh, doing. Oh, mounting. Here. Yeah, mounting. Not so much like a, let me ride you across the the, the plains, but more like I'm gonna get on top of this badger and hang on, because <laughs> that was uh, an effective way of dealing with creatures. So, you know, well, technically that's nature, and I want to know if you can actually test nature. In, the, in here you know what um i'm willing to say it is can i test health actually um i think so i just want to double check real quick in the rules but i think you can um no it's got to be a skill you don't have it has to be a skill not an ability um so so okay uh, but if you want to do that that would probably be lore mouse all right yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do lore mouse i like how it makes you level up your nature back up by the way Make this yeah. one a little test. Uh, so what's that? What am I rolling? So that would be will. No, I you, guess? you don't, No, it's not an actual test. Like you don't. You mark. You just mark an attempt that you you, you attempted. Oh, okay. Well, right. Like so, you're learning it. So right now, your your nature was two. You need one more lore mouse test to open it. Right. Like that's how that works. Yeah. So. Um. So, nice and neat. Cool. Um, I have a what's question. everyone else doing? Yeah, what's up? If your nature is five, right, mm -hmm. and you're trying to learn a new skill, so you need to get five attempts to unlock it. Mm -hmm. What if you have uh, three attempts already checked out, but and you tax your uh, nature twice, to lower it to the total to three? Would you automatically learn that skill because you? meet the requirements yes but um it's not your current nature it's your your max current nature yeah you need so to you're, yeah. so you're so it's not so it's, it's not enough to do three out of five you would have to dump your nature to three out of that's three what, yeah that's what i was saying like yes. tax it down to yes like... yep that's that's a thing that you should do but um remember so like i think i'm glad you brought that up because that's that's a big part of mouse guard is if you have a high nature you don't actually have to learn that many skills because if you don't have the skill, you can just throw your nature dice at it. Mm -hmm. um, you're rolling five dice or whatever. It's actually also... But, but when you're not... Sorry, it's just when when it's not a thing in your nature, your nature is going to be going down every time you do it. Like, it's it's wearing you down. Like, you're, you can't use, like, your raw ability over time. You got to adjust. Yeah. It also okay. uh, will tax you in other ways, too. Like, if you take your nature down, I had to change a trait to a negative trait... Uh, which doesn't That's, mean you can only use it negatively, but it's it's a trait that reflects negatively on Huey for the most part. That's, so. that's only if your nature goes to a zero. You can deliberately tank your nature. Wait, how do you um, reduce the max nature? I thought the only way to do it was to get it down to zero. No, Kika did it uh, last session. Um, so she said Kika was one out of four. Mm -hmm. You can literally... Um, if you're at, like, so let's that example, Kika was one out of four, and she spent a persona point um, for Ellie. And so she actually removed uh, from one out of four to three out of three. She just. Oh, I mean, that's what I did. I, I went three. from three, uh, one mm -hmm. out of three to 
two out of two. Not exactly. You lost a roll, which caused you to dip down to zero. If that makes sense. Okay. Sure. Kika did not lose a roll um, when she when that happened. She did it prior to rolling. Mm -hmm. okay. Should she have failed? It should she have failed and lost by three? It would have went down to zero, just like yours. Okay. So that would have been a problem. Okay. okay? Um, so what yeah. are you two testing then? New skills. Uh, instructor again. No, no, that's it. Has to be a skill you don't know yet. Yeah, instructor. You, I don't yeah. know instructor. Oh, I see. That's kind of cool. I didn't think. So it was yeah, wait, yeah. I, I marked it from the for the first round that we did, where it was uh, attempt a skill or whatever, or raise a pass or fail, and then this last one I put another one in. Is that legal? Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. I do that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be a patrol skill or anything. That's that's okay. fine. That's that works good. Yep. And that fulfills the requirements for it. Yeah. So you're you're getting closer and closer to learning instructor. Okay. So um, I wanted to just add one more thing to the um, learning skills that that you're getting when because your question was like right was like the perfect question there, uh, Zippy. So the way instructor works though, is the difficulty for you to teach somebody is your current nature, not your max. So so if you actually were like one out of five to teach you something would be very easy. It's an ob one test. Okay, and cool. So, and then that counts as one of your like, and, and if the instructor test uh, succeeds, then that you can mark whatever skill you're trying to learn as a pass or a fail. So that's how that works. I thought it was the the current nature of the person you're trying to teach. It is the current nature of the person you're trying to teach. So if you are the student and you have one out of five and Henley's using his instructor skill on you, then Henley has to beat an ob one to teach you the skill that you don't have. Yeah. So if so you could literally teach you instructor. I could. You'd use instructor yeah. to teach you instructor if your nature went down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like the uh, Miss character had six nature, which meant it was almost impossible for me to teach him anything, which made that skill yeah. hard to level. So yep. yeah, is that? Yeah. Uh, Kika, what's your? Cool. What would it be like to scale a wall? Climbing or something like I guess. that. Um, I mean that's part of your nature of climbing. Ah. Uh. So I guess it's kind I'll... of climbing and health. It's more about like, that sounds more like maybe scouting or um, pathfinding, right? Like if you're talking about physically exerting yourself over obstacles, that's probably like scouting and pathfinding. Uh, if, okay. you, if you needed a skill for that. Um, yeah, the skills are so uh, like really broad. Very specific. They're, they're like very, oh. I would say broad because like, in in a lot of games it'd be like, okay what's your climb skill or like or what's your climb speed or in this one it's like yeah a lot of things come under scouting or pathfinding yeah. or in this case yeah. like lore mouse to to ride a this creature game, like, okay yeah yeah like this game emulates the comics it's not trying to emulate a simulation it's trying to make it so sessions feel like you picked up a volume of of the comic yeah and like fighter, right. for example, it covers and all aspects of fighting, including fighting without a weapon. So like, yeah. yeah, it's it's simple in that regard. It's broad. It's simple. It's it's wide. Yeah. I will do Pathfinder then. Sure. Do you already know that though? No, I know Scout. You don't know Pathfinder? Huh. No, I don't. That's super cool. Weird. Uh, the next thing up is that it's everyone's birthday. So everyone's year goes up. You're, you have gotten one year older. Oh, 46. Graham gets a uh, disapproving letter from his parents about him being in the mouse guard. I, I always picture uh, that his parents are like the old, like traditional old Jewish parents. <laughs> Why do you want to be a mouse guard? What's wrong with being a cartographer? I I I want to be I want to go out I want to make a difference. Why do you got to be a why do you got to make a difference? Why don't you just stay here? A different The only difference you're going to make is going to give your mother a heart attack. How can I be worried about you all the time? 
think how can they be cartographers if doing they cartography can't? you can keep people from getting lost oh come on ma. i'm too uh, i would have i would have fight uh weasels and, and giant uh giant snakes and badgers we you want to fight weasels and badgers for them to stay behind the scent border I want to go beyond the sample to see greener pastures. How can you get greener than around here? I don't you know, spend Mom. so much time making sure everything is green. I don't know, Ma. I just, I, you never know. Man, mouse lead is a fucking detail. <laughs> yeah. That's what all the time you have for in the winter. So, perfect. I love that. All right, um, so everyone's age goes up. And then the next thing we do is... Um, Ellie it's, is it, now legal in the UK. What's that, 16? All right. Yes. Seven? Yeah. Oh, jeez. All right. Um, <laughs> so this is something I want to ask, and everybody, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this for this part. But um, think... So we're going to... The game asks us to think about what our characters have experienced this year on patrol um, and what we have done so far. And you're going to give you mark yourself a new wise for this experience. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. So, um, so what this represents is it's incumbent on all the mouse guard to write up reports of the year. So you are like kind of compiling and writing up these things and you know, recollecting uh, your thoughts and all and your experiences. And they've left you with some pretty vital lessons. And so everyone will get a new wise uh, reflecting that. And I want to hear um, what you guys think, uh, what your wises are. <laughs> are. Are you ready for mine? It, it probably yeah. won't be very good, but we'll see how we go. I'm thinking... Dipshit uh, wise? No, no, no. I'm thinking... <laughs> well, maybe. It might cover that. But I'm thinking uh, youth wise. Yeah. For dealing uh, with people wise. younger than me. Yeah. And how, yeah. how I'm oh. supposed to fucking like treat them <laughs> yeah yeah how to, yeah, how to no, baby I, handle people you know <laughs> yeah um i would put that under tender paul wise i would write tender paul wise i think uh and that because that would also represent but um no no it, yeah uh, does it is it actually represent tender paul's or does it represent i um, this the is citizenry? Most, this is i think citizenry more than anything um I'm mostly coming from uh, the yeah. perspective. What do you call mice babies? Kids? Kitties? Uh, Kids? Maybe. Micelings? Measles? I don't know. Measles. Yeah. No, I, but uh, yeah, no, like I like, I like the idea of child, like children wise or yeah. teenager wise. Yeah, it's mostly coming from like the perspective of Ingrid um, uh, more than anything and uh, um, uh, Chester. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, mostly because like that was, in my eyes, like I mean, we had a lot of failures over the years. Adolescent wise. <laughs> Adolescent wise, yeah. Um, but like that was like my biggest failure was uh, losing a tender paw and losing a recruit. Uh, yeah. So, so th that's that's what I'm thinking. What I mean, I don't, romance I don't know. wise, he retires to write romance novels. So you got you got you got a bunch of choices for this for this wise. You have uh, mouse. Uh, you have pup. You have pinky. You have kitten. Wise. Uh, those are all names for uh, baby mouse. They call a baby uh, yeah. mouse a kitten. Oh that uh, yeah, and anime mangas just said that in chat. Right at the, like at the exact same moment, you you said pinkies. Yeah, pinkies. Mm. A, a mouse pup or a pinky is uh, more. Like pup wise, pup wise is is adorable. I don't know. I think Pinky is really cute. Pinky what, wise, or and then you, you have go, brain wise. What was that? Uh, what was that old uh, kids movie? Uh, shit. They called uh, the like little mouse, the hedgehog, and the mole furlings. I was I was I no mostly idea. thinking for this for this wise though, it mostly be targeted at people like. I'm 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 being very general here, but like everyone before the Weasel Wars, sort of thing, you know, like uh, um, people who like uh, guardsmen who weren't a part of it, um, uh, children who aren't a part of the the uh, the actual 
like, uh, basically innocent wise <laughs> innocent wise i mean maybe i don't know like yeah right i mean like there's certain like there's a couple things that i took from this year the first was being that uh um a lot of younger people around me threw a lot of tantrums um and for reasons that i don't fully comprehend or you know huey doesn't fully yeah. comprehend and the other was um oh, i just had it and now i've lost it um it makes me think it's more like argument wise like you know how to deal with people yeah and like you know like maybe maybe i spent too much time like actually fighting a right. war and now it's come back from the war and it's, it's less about like uh, attacking people all the time more about like you know d just letting people uh, i don't know compromise wise no, not so much compromise but like there's more um, like people's problems aren't just like what's beyond the scent wall border you know like there's a lot of people that are just like focused it's inwardly. more personal yeah, yeah. like uh, and i can't really think of a, a wise that would be like you know, because um, the way that I look at that, like the way I see this wires working for me is being like, OK, I fucked up in a social situation dealing with shit that Huey doesn't normally deal with. But I could see that coming up um, with this wires and maybe have a chance to re-roll it. Right. That's why I want to build this wires because I want to be able to like in these situations, like attempt it again or something along those lines. Um, but the only thing I can think of is youth wires. But. Uh, that doesn't necessarily cover the the aspect that I'm trying to cover here. So, like um, recruit wise, because if you want to like do it, not just tender paws, but recruiting people. Well, this is this is for like, that. So, yeah, like just dealing with yeah. young, like young people who might be entering the guard, like, and so dealing with their tantrums and their problems and being how to, how to communicate with them. Yeah, and the the other aspect that I the other role that comes into mind was when I stood on the soapbox and tried to get people to help with protecting their town but they're like no yeah like i can't think of a, a wise that i would have that would help with that speech wise uh, uh i don't know maybe i don't know like well, I'm, i mean you can literally take order wise <laughs> like that's a thing you can do i don't see myself doing a lot of talking in the future but it was like 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 uh, politician wise is a uh, thing you can do that's the wise that I'm going to take. You're going to take that? Yeah. Uh, let me think on a bit more. <laughs> no hear... shit, really? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll hear what I everyone thinking, else is Because we've done a lot of, like, dealing with people and mm. compromising and, yeah, like, trying to get, like, a elderly mayor to step down and working with villagers Deal and wide, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. politics-wise. <laughs> what about something, like, age gap-wise, you know? Like, age gap wise like millennial wise <laughs> like like what would you oh hold on i got some avocado toast do i get a plus one die no it's not so much that it's more like when when like people's what people i know what i know what this is this wise will cover when i want to re-roll because of the fact that huey doesn't comprehend uh, what is important to other people right now. And I feel like that's that came up a lot for Huey in the game. So things like, you know, oh, uh, in, instead of protecting my family, I want to protect my belongings. Or like, uh, you know, when it comes to like what's important to... The, like, I don't want you to build... I don't want to help you with the scent border unless you marry me. And I was like, well, that's fucking incredibly selfish. But she's thinking inwardly rather than like for the greater good which you know i would think that a lot of older mice would generally think about um like for example that older uh, politician then, lady we had was thinking yeah for the greater good rather than for like frankly frankly dude that sounds to me i think i think the best thing for that for that scenario is persuader wise you understanding people's motivations and making deals like that's what persuader is so you have persuader wise yeah i just never rolled it at all the yeah, one, but it's, it's, not I, a, it's not a matter. It's not important that that you actually had to roll that stuff. It's that you had to be around what makes people like motivate. So like a lot of a big deal about persuading people is like being like this is in your best interest, and you have to understand what's behind what their motivations are and understand what they value to give them something that's in their best interest. So like persuader wise seems like the the most apt one that also doesn't like limit you to like you know just like maybe seeing it one time this year. 
right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like for Think example, about it. Yeah. Think about it because we actually aren't, we haven't heard Alex's yet, right? Like we, we haven't heard Zippy's. So like I would I'd love to hear what uh, Zippy has in store um, for Graham as well. So like you know, if you want to just like you know let that marinate a little bit. I uh, okay sure yep I'll let it marinate. Yeah, what's up? So, um, what are you thinking? You're muted. You don't have sound. I double muted myself. I muted myself. Okay. Anyways, uh, I was thinking more of like, civ- not civilian wise, but maybe like city wise. I have lock haven wise. Like you can specific, yeah. uh, like you can you take specific cities you take oh you take specific cities yeah uh we were we can take specific types of people like elderly mob wise wise. there we go mob wise because uh the fact that he almost incited a riot unintentionally okay okay yeah mob unruly mob wise yeah 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 that's a good one because like he (laughs) It's like, tell us the truth. Okay, your mayor told us not to tell you anything. Proletariat wise. No. Okay. That works for me. Um, so I was I, I think I got a better name for it, uh, but like it it might seem weird to call it this, but like mouse nature wise, um for more like understanding what mice really want and uh like motivation wise? Yeah, motivation wise. Okay, yeah, that that works for me. I'll take motivation wise. Yeah. So in in it put it in layman terms, uh, being able to like make a uh, re-roll or like spend persona to uh, re-roll a failed check when attempting to either motivate or uh, like change the perception of someone based on what motivates them. Yeah, almost, almost yeah. like that's covering like that was my lo- yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I dig that a lot. I, that's that sounds that sounds like what I was thinking when when I was suggested persuader wise. Like that's and also I, I really like the way you logic that out, Henley. I really mm. appreciate how you're like. So this is the mechanical scenario I see myself using this in. What yeah. can I do to like get that for fiction? And it's based on your fiction. It's not like you built your character from scratch and this happened. This is this is like you. This is the other way around. This is this is what happened this year, and now we're like digging the other way, but mm-hmm. also in a way that gives you an advantage. So like a, that's cool. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really good. Cool. And so then we have wise. wise and... <laughs> the opposite yeah. of anarchy wise would probably be what uh, <laughs> what he's after there, but yeah. So and... so it is now canically official. Uh, Graham and Huey are foils of each other. We're exact opposites. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, better partners in crime. So. And Ellie yeah. is stuck in the middle. Yeah, and Ellie, you are politician wise. Yeah, politics cool. wise. Yeah, politics. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with politics wise. <laughs> What's next, DM? Um, um, cool. All right. Uh, so then, that's our. Those are our wises, and now we do. Now we do the next part, which are called reflections. Uh, this is when we're going to be changing our traits. Um, changing we're gonna traits. Do, Interesting. Yes, we're doing three rounds of this. Um, the first one is that some another player is going to represent your character, so someone else's character. You're going to describe memorable experiences with that character, and then suggest a new trait for them to earn because of that. On roll twenty, I have a giant list of the basic traits that are listed in the book. Um, if you can, you can totally use one of those. Should you want to, you can make up a new one if if that works for you better as well. But I thought having a list of traits here could help out um, th- with the thinking process. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so um, I don't have a say in this one as a GM. This is actually you as players doing this, nominating each other for these ones. After we've done that. The next step is that you yourself, yourself will nominate and for for changing and modifying a, a trait. Um, this this you can either so, once again, so you can either elevate a trait from level one to two or two to three, or you can change a trait. 
of yourselves. It cannot be one that was just uh, just suggested to you. It has to be one of your existing ones. Okay. And then the last one is as a GM, I can I can modify a trait. Okay. So this first Those are one. The three things we're doing. So the first one is we get a new trait. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So like Dave, like you would have to either take on the role of of being the um, representative for either Graham or Kika, and you describe your story with them. And then and, and and their experiences of of your time with them, and then you suggest a trait based on that. Does that make sense? Am I doing it from Huey's perspective, or am I doing it from the other character? You can do it from from Huey's or or a player perspective. I'm cool with either. I mean, I like the idea of it being from Huey's perspective. I already have old fur. <laughs> I already mm-hmm. have a good idea. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't do it. You, oh, if you have a good idea for someone else, you can. Do I have that. a good idea for Henley. Okay. Okay. All right, then let's let's start off with you, Kika. Kika, so you're going to represent Huey. Oh yeah. Um, even like from the very beginning, like even from the second session, even in his uh, belief, he always um, immediately jumps into danger to protect other mice, especially the tender paws and. Like he took out an entire, like just slaughtered an entire camp. Of yeah, the, the butcher. Yeah, the butcher. The butcher of Barkstone, right? Just to protect um, Chester, and he just never really wavered from that. So I think he deserves defender. Um. So at the same time here, um, mm. Uh, I get to tell so so it's not just you as a representative gets to tell the story. We all get to take turns recollecting about stories about the mice, the mouse in uh. particular, too. But but no no but just but you are the one who can only nominate a trait. All okay. we get to do is just tell the stories about our mouse, the mouse uh. experience. Okay? okay, so that's what's special about being the representative for that. And frankly, I love that suggestion, and that is really good, uh, in my, to me. Okay. Um, so my favorite story about about um, Huey. Yeah. Um, so boy, there's there's several, um, but I think I think the one that I think that that stood out the most about him um, ha- is is actually a story of overtime, and how just he can in 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 a, an emotionally charged moment just make a decision. Uh, several times you saw that. Um, several like the number one thing I obviously was with the scent border with um, with Ingrid. Um, just being like, okay, we got to do it because the mission comes first. Or um, there's other times, like, I think with, um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Barkstone, um, of course, uh, just making the making the calls. Like, you just make calls all the time. Okay, yeah. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I wanted with the character, and I'm glad that came across, you know. For me, I okay. So this is this this is going to be very difficult because I'm only going off of like three sessions mm-hmm. and stuff. I, I kind of came in like in the middle, uh, but my thing would be defender. I think that would be a very appropriate trait because there has never been a moment in the in the other sessions that I was in that I didn't see Huey just jump to the defense of something like when we first met Graham he jumped uh, Huey jumped to the defense of the mail he jumped on top of it he defended it he lost his sword to that raven Uh, when it came to the wheat he he jumped he was the first to jump onto the giant raccoon and then he was the first one to jump to the defense and gather the townspeople to put out the fire. He defended the townspeople by punching Graham in the face. I mean... That was for Huey, though. <laughs> it was for Huey, but it in turn defended. Mm. It defended mm. the mayor, because if he didn't punch Graham in the face and discredit him they would have probably strung up the uh, mayor by his tail. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
it, it like I if I can do one thing, it's it's play that 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 old character, you know, that that one that doesn't waver, you know. I I find it I find it fun to play those types, so I'm glad that that came across. Yeah. To be honest with you. Uh, cool. So I guess I'll write defender in as a trait. Mm -hmm. You are in the trait defender. Great. Uh, wait, how do we? Add? Oh, there we go. And what level? It comes in at one, yeah. Yes, the level one trait. Okay. Um, I'm actually. Uh, uh, I'm actually going to uh, add one to uh, uh, to Ellie, I think. Uh, considering, I would say that uh, she, uh, without fail, uh, has been a an interesting tender pool to raise, given the fact that uh, she seems to pretty much raise herself in that regard. Um, but the one, the one trait that always came across the most uh, <laughs> was how stubborn she was uh, for just about every aspect of her beliefs. And the one, the one thing that uh, the one thing that came up the most was uh, how she was always willing to make sure that the mouse mouse kind i guess you would call it uh was working for other mouse kind during the actual episodes um there's been plenty of instances where that's come up uh especially in the earlier parts of the game where she i guess kika was mostly just trying to uh make her belief work for her in every instance that she could um which is to say, I guess playing the game, but like you know, it uh, it it made it made Ellie come across as a stubborn stubborn mouse, mostly because she was like, "I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn this episode, and you're going to teach me," and it was like, mm, "Okay, I guess that's the truth." <laughs> and in a lot of instances, when uh, you know when things weren't going the way that she wanted it would she would still find a way to make sure that her belief come across um i, th I think stubborn is a is one that i'd like to nominate for her um not not stubborn in like a, a negative way but stubborn as in like listen old man this is how things need to go and in a lot of instances, she was, you know, right. Uh, dealing with the frogs, for example, my first instance was like, okay, time to make some frog suey, you know, like, and and hers was like, no, let's just talk to them. I'm like, okay, you know, like, yeah, that's that's how I see it. Uh, stubborn, stubborn, like, I from my perspective my perspective i would say that ellie's rather er, clever but huey's known ellie longer so yeah i would, I would well say, it's either stubborn or driven i mean both of them were driven yeah driven um, like i, I yeah, think you muted eric by the way i'm totally muted.com yeah, yeah. It's either stubborn uh, or driven. It's one of those two, because the in my eyes, like driven is, I guess stubborn is a negative trait, but like driven is like the positive version of stubborn, right? Um, kind of almost like a dog with a bone in that regard, you know? Yeah, she. I would say she was very driven. She got uh, everybody together uh, when we had to go to. Well, when you guys had to go to that ball, and she had the. Uh, connections to do so in <laughs> ivy dale uh when we were fighting the raven the idea that she wanted to uh scare off the raven but at least distract it with the gold coins was pretty good um, clever yeah resourceful yeah, very resourceful um but like it, it's the fact that she she always either like i've always seen her use like mount uh 
Legends of the Mouse Guard and very play to her character and keep to like her beliefs kind of deal. Yeah, that's, that, that's the, how yeah. I came across as well. Like, yeah, like her her personal beliefs, which was like, um, remind me what was your first one? It was like, uh, mouse guard needs to work to uh, mouse kind needs to work together for the for the like yeah. all mice um, need to work towards uh, work as a whole, um, almost like a almost a little communist, but probably not. <laughs> yeah, um, society must serve all of mouse kind, and for that to work, um, us all of mouse kind must serve society yeah, yeah, or else yeah. we're just like lost in a harsh wilderness and yeah. doomed to die and be yeah. eaten yeah i think even our our very first mission and your compassion given to several prisoners i thought was pretty significant um you always always thought about what it would be like for for a non-mouse guard and kind of stood against I think I think the reason why you're you get driven from from Huey's perspective is because you went against Huey so many times. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. I would also agree with compassionate as well. I yeah, because ultimately you're just being compassionate, <laughs> like to me. But uh, you're like, but wait, only and when I say compassionate, I think I, I don't mean like super feely. You were just really you're empathetic. You have a, you have the empathetic you had a pronounced well. ability yeah. to put yourself. Um, your mind into another person's perspective and think about what they want and 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 what's going on in their head and sympathize like that was a big deal i think to me like seeing you through play and you were doing that all the time yeah uh so, so that was really cool i i'm 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 still gonna stay with driven um because i think yeah. that i think that works on a lot more like from a mechanical point of view i think driven works a lot better in com than compassion um um, mostly because you I like can, that. Yeah, I, like from a mechanics point of view, you can use driven in a lot of ways that you can't use compassionate. Compassionate seems like a, oh, I'm trying to help these poor people, but driven seems like I have a goal. I want to achieve that goal. Let me use driven. Well, like, well, here's here's also why I think driven is interesting, and I really think that's actually the better one than compassionate as well. Um, from the stories, um, you know, many times you invoked fiery. Mm. Yes, like so many times you are like really stepped up and you know uh, like uh and right when when you threw the slingshot um and and hit the the um what was it lorelei in the head like when you there were all of these big moments when like you you stepped up to the plate i think and and you were like you know like no one hurts my friends and you use fiery for it and stuff and i was like yeah like that's i see why driven is the better answer there so i love that that's cool plus uh, the other trait that I used more than fiery was hard worker. Yeah. And seven. Wow. Yeah. Right. Really, only seven? Because I go, I go brave up to twelve. <laughs> well, that's because you only had you, you only you had, ever level, used you two. Brave. You only used brave. I had, I had, I had. What did I have instead of old fur? I can't even. You remember had legends that. of the, or you had guards honor. Ah, yeah. I used that a, a, a few times. Yeah. I think cool. All right, and then time. I think I will do I will do Graham since you guys closed the loop there um, to let that in, which is kind of unfair. But um, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's okay. So Graham, I think I think the stories of Graham, um, particularly even last sessions, um, you highlight that you are your own mouse. Um, but I think. I think I'm going to save the one that I, I was originally going for about, t you know, operating in beat of your own drum i was thinking about giving you independent but rather than independent i think what actually what what you are more is that you are a natural mouse through and through and so i'm going to nominate you to have natural bearings you helped so many times on scouting and pathfinding tests as well as being there to support the group as well as you get stir crazy in towns you, you even described it yourself today how you you would take a little sorties out outside of lock haven just to get to clear your head a little bit and 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 get some uh touching base so i mm. nominate you to have natural bearings i was um, i know, was gonna you, nominate sharp eyes yeah sharp eyes. you are Sorry. yeah well yeah, yeah. too bad too bad it's not, it's not your not your chance mm -hmm. but um my favorite i think my favorite uh, most memorable story for graham has to be uh, with the um, when when you um, literally the first session, um, asking for the book. 
um, asking for the book uh, with the um, with the librarian mouse. Oh, I, I forget the name of at this moment, but uh, when you like put, you know, I just Mabel. when you started describing it, it was so perfect. Like I could see your mouse trying to like slick their hair back because of the tuft and stuff. Like putting that one shoulder on the like, on the counter, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like just that pose, that classic pose. Like ah, uh, so you come here often. <laughs> it's like kind of like awkward. All the while having like this like small underage mouse just kind of like sitting there, just like what? If you were yeah. a human being, if if he was a human being, your mouse, I can see himself giving him waking up Who's the in actor? the street. Who's the actor? Oh god, I don't know. But I, can I nominate an actor? All right, Steve Buscemi. Yes! Oh my god, I was gonna say Steve Buscemi too. <laughs> No, yes. I, I don't. I don't know. If, I don't know if he's on the I level. You not? I was gonna nominate Steve Buscemi. I don't know if he's on the level of like, say, hello, fellow, fellow children. But like, I think, I think he's on the level of like. I didn't picture an actor. I just pictured like a long-haired blonde guy who's giving himself a whore's bath before going into the library to talk to the lady. Uh, the the librarian. Like for some reason, that just went through my mind. He like as he walks, as he's about to walk, and he goes, "Oh yeah, I need to deal with that." Like <laughs> he picks up like a couple roses and he like rubs it in his pits. Yeah, <laughs> uh, for some reason, that's what I imagined. Uh, Fabio? No, not not so much Fabio, <laughs> but like no, you described yourself as being a little like unkempt and uh, like raggedy, kind of kind of like a tramp. Yeah. I know. I I love Steve Buscemi. <laughs> That's the perfect one <laughs> to me. Uh, it's, Why do it's, I gotta I don't be? Care, I don't care what what you say it is, <laughs> Alex. Uh, to me, my my head canon is that it's Steve Buscemi. Great. So does so does. Uh, I was about to call him Shallot. Holy crap! Uh, does Graham have uh, bug eyes? <laughs> Could be. Yeah. <laughs> like like a, like a mouse toy that was squeezed too hard in the eyes. <laughs> That's why he's so good at, good at spotting things. Yeah. He is higher peripheral vision than anyone else yeah so Woo. sweet cool all right then so that's that's level one that's the um that's the first pass that's us reviewing and nominating each other and sharing stories the next step is that we each will um represent ourselves and um we're going to go ahead and um argue that one of our traits should be changed that we have not once again not one of the ones we just got one of our existing traits they either get love uh, elevated to level two or three um or otherwise they should be they should get changed uh so who wants to go i, I want to level brave to three <laughs> yeah you use brave literally all the time <laughs> it's a defining cornerstone of huey i, I think putting yeah, it to three it makes a lot of sense i used it 12 cool. times through a yeah. seven session so uh brave is yeah um so level three do you know what level three traits do no what do they do level three traits um you can i think you can invoke them as many times as you want per <laughs> session okay they automatically grant you a plus one success what that is insane. All right. So, so instead of giving you an extra die, you just flat out get an extra success. And I get to use it as many times as I want. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Or maybe so it's three it times per sense. session. Jeez. I think it's actually, frankly, I think it might be three times per session. Three is the three highest level kind as of well. a lot, though. Yeah. yeah, right? My God. I mean, I could have used it a lot more if I, if I had more than two times a session. Let's be real. But... Yeah, uh, brave level three. No, it's all tests. It's all tests related to it. So I can use it so as much it, as I want. Nice. Yep. It's a level three trait. That's fucking great. I uh, I really enjoy I really enjoy using brave because it's just like it allows me to just cut through the bullshit like a hot, like a hot knife through butter. You know, like that's that's how I I look at brave. I'm just like right. I have no reason to hesitate. Let's go. Like well. Well, remember, you can only use one trait per die roll. Yeah. So, like, if you use that, uh, so keep that in mind. Some here's um, and the reason why I say keep that in mind, saving your level three trait on a on say a fighter roll and you tie, you can use brave to give yourself an automatic success and break the tie in your favor now. So instead of going down, you can actually win ties automatically now with that trait. But remember? Would, wouldn't Okay, so if I used another trait, 
wouldn't I yeah. not be in the tie position anyway? Yeah, I mean, that's totally a possibility as well. <laughs> that's totally a possibility. Yeah, okay, cool. Old for level three anime is exactly what I'm thinking too. Just, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> Every single roll. <laughs> There's a bomb on the toilet. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of the Weasel Wars. All right, cool. Is there a trait for nom flashbacks? Can I have that? Hard is hardened one. <laughs> Not sure. PTSD. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, sh you could play up sharp-eyed really easily with that. Like you, you are too sensitive, like to to things. Someone drops a, a drops a fucking mug, and I'm just like pull out the sword and throw it across the room. <laughs> yeah, like sharp-eyed would be really good if someone was twitchy right oh yeah like you're reacting to like everything all the time like too much sensory stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i can see that the, yeah. but that also makes it so good um at spotting things early but you have a lot of false positives probably okay so anyways who uh who else wants to go graham or uh, or kika uh i'll go um oh, everyone's in the wrong place to say i, I am thinking i'm going to be leveling up a trait and it's the one that you mentioned and really one that was core to my even character development, which is fiery. Because yeah. um, when I made Ellie, I wanted her to be like a very passionate, driven, um, idealistic, I think is the word, mouse, who is very much like, again extremely passionate about her beliefs about what a mouse guard should be and i think i played into that really well and she yeah. has she never really ran into any situations that like swayed her from that personality and yeah she it was only really strengthened very passionate yeah definitely yeah. passionate and idealistic yeah yeah totally totally cool what about graham uh i i was thinking about maybe changing one of my traits because one of my original like both my original traits were inquisitive and clever mm -hmm. they're like the same trait though yeah and that's what i was thinking that they were like kind of the same trait because inquisitive does like mean clever in like definition wise uh so i was thinking about changing clever to okay. more like scarred. So how would you use like uh, mechanic speaking? How would you use scarred? Um, like the only reason I could see is like when you're like running away or like having like forewarning on something happening, maybe like it's yeah. happened to you before. But like I can't really think of anything like that sticks out to me. Like I, I would, I would, I would say like, it would be something that was ingrained to him when he was training as a tender paw. Mm -hmm. uh, I always wouldn't thought, wise like, be better than. I was, th uh, see, I'm thinking I'm uh, wise scarred because I feel like Falker, his his mentor, is Huey essentially, uh, would take him out and leave him in the wilderness for like like a goji process like a weeks at a time he would he would take him out and he like throw he would throw him a, uh, beyond the scent border and just kind of leave him there for a bit he'd keep an eye on him but he would like go back and make sure that he's not dead kind of deal and see like what uh what's his progress because his uh specialty was survivalist mm -hmm. so he would be always trying to see whether or not uh, Graham had what it took to survive in like a very harsh environment, but I'm trying to think of like what kind of trait would reflect that. Um, uh, and I was thinking maybe scarred because he he feels like he did, at the time he didn't understand what Falker was doing. He thought he was just being a terrible person, like a terrible mentor. Why would you leave this like young mouse out in the wilderness to possibly be eaten by badgers or attacked by? roving bands of weasels so wouldn't yeah. skeptical or something like that be better than or suspicious maybe like what okay mechanics wise what do you want to use it for let's see 
Because that's the first question you got to ask. This is true. Because uh, you know. What uh, I'm I'm trying to look up where the traits are in the book so I can like look at what they like. Oh yeah, two sixty. Two sixty. So I want to look at like what uh, what Scarred actually sure. said. Sure. So. So here's what Scarred says. Mice in the guard who live through the Weasel Wars are often scarred by their experiences. They're tough and not easily flustered by injury or fear, but they're also maimed psychological or psychologically scarred by their experiences. So that's more about the Weasel Wars. Oh, that's more about the Weasel Wars. Okay, so let's. But you could. What? But I don't. I don't. But if are you trying to use Scarred from your your training? Yeah. Like I I I, I had this like idea where uh, Falker set up like. Graham to be out in the wilderness and then jumped by a band of mercenaries and like see how he would react what about to fight or flight kind of tough. Situation. I tough? think tough would be would make sense. Tough some mice are built better than others. They're better at coping with injury and sickness, but this quality also leads to certain hubris. They're vulnerable to other mice who plays into their strength. I think tough I mean you Graham does have a little bit of an ego to him, mm -hmm. which is cool. Um, but more, it's not necessarily tough in that same way that we think of like strong tough, but more like you are mentally, like you have strong mental fortitude as well as being resourceful and like you're good at carrying yourself. You're tough, right? So that you're, that also reflects your training to me is that you are, you're hardened. Okay. All right. So yeah, Which I would, you're a uh, calloused, it, it, you know, like you, you, you've been through the ringer a few times. Yeah. So yeah, we'll change clever to tough. I think that would be uh, a better combination. Because clip like inquisitive and clever kind of felt like the same thing to me. So mm -hmm. right now he's inquisitive, he's tough, and he has natural bearings. What is natural bearings? Like? That's the one I just gave you. Yeah. Natural bearings is quite the opposite of being lost. Those with natural bearings always seem to know where they are. They also tend to have a wanderlust that makes them uncomfortable in cities. This, I'm representing that by this is you picking up how to um, be, you know, like all of your help on the pathfinding roles and yeah. being outside and on the borders. Like you just have a really good idea for a, for being out in the wilds. I have a question. And you also your cartography background. So like that's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. Like you just yeah. you does, get it. You know where does, you are. Does sharp tooth just mean you have sharp teeth? Yeah, basically. Oh. You're not, I mean, you're not afraid of using your teeth and, teeth and fighting. Yeah. Uh, using your teeth in, in, in fights. Um, they have problems with bruxing or grinding their teeth. They can keep their fellow patrol mice all night if they grind their teeth in their sleep. Or bite the head off of an arrow. Yeah, I could see. Just I could, I could see. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> but I think tough would work. I think I, I think I could use tough more uh, more mechanically. Like, uh, especially against people who... Stoic. Stoic. Mm -hmm. A, stoic, a mouse. stoic mouse never complains about the hardships of life. Uh, it says in the guard, but I mean, if you just leave it at, at life, it, also, it works perfectly. He accepts them and soldiers on. However, the same quality makes him emotionally remote and difficult to reach in matters of empathy, love, and compassion. The the one that's thing actually that, more like Henley. That's more yeah. like Huey. Yeah. See, with Graham, he he's the kind of guy like he'll make jokes about his experiences. Yeah, yeah, you that's know? true. He'll he'll laugh them off uh and he's very like very so, animated we don't have to use one of these words that are listed here as traits if you have another word that you would rather um supplement that's that's cool too that's an option here i think tough would work like i think that would be easier to think of like how to use for and against certain yeah. things also, if you want the definition of sharp eyed, it literally describes what you said in training. FYI. Which was a sharp eyed mouse is always welcome on patrol. He makes a good scout or hunter. Sometimes, after staring at, a, at the brush for days on end, the sharp eyed mouse can get a little jumpy. I don't know if that's more up your alley. That's also, yeah. If. My question for you is how what does what does being resourceful look like to to Graham? Is it is it being uh, having a keen lookout for scavenging things? Is it like weathering stuff down, you know, the elements and and surviving? Like more, are you like basically are you more constitutional or or, or wise? Right. I feel, I feel like naturally Graham would 
because because of the way he was trained he would rather focus on surviving and weathering certain conditions than like really f running out and foraging okay but he can he can create yeah. things from scratch like yeah snares and whatnot totally yeah. okay so sounds like tough tough's the answer give me one trait that does everything I wasn't looking for that. <laughs> He's cool. a very jack of all trades mouse when I look at him. And um Kika, you leveled up um fiery, right? Nice. Okay, cool. Uh then it comes to me, and I get to modify a trait for you guys. Um so that's that's kinda cool. Let me look at Huey's list and then let me figure out which one I want to grab from you. You have guards honor. Did you just take a new guard's honor? No, no. You tra we trained bo changed bold before. To old oh, guard. we changed bold. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. Well, for you, Eric, I nominate the trait thoughtful. Oh, I nominate the trait skeptical. <laughs> yeah. I um, nominate the trait power gamer. I nominate the trait. Meta gamer. God modder. We don't ever talk about what we're putting out and uh, cards out in the uh, in those rolls early ever again. You use guards honor six times. Yep. Which is a lot. Yep. It's got a lot. Not of honor. sure. I'm not comfortable changing Brave, because that's for sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, Dave. I go. just changed Brave. It's like, well, fuck. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I'm gonna change. I think I'm gonna change Old Fur to Scarred, because that's actually more what you, I think you're about. Scar. That also plays into the fact that you remember you, you literally asked for a wise about not dealing with people from the Weasel Wars, like that was your first thing out of your mouth mm -hmm. today. So I'm gonna change Old Fur to Scarred. Okay. Does that mean I can use Scott to like do like recovery rolls? Yeah, it could totally help you with that being tough, and it could all it would be. It's real. It's basically like being tough. Um, you can use Scar to um mitigate kind of anything, right? Interesting. Okay. A web um, through it. You know, if if you ever had to go on a hard journey, like I'm scarred, like this is nothing. I've I've de I've dealt with worse in the Weasel Wars, right? I can think of um, a lot of ways to use Scarred negatively too, so I'm happy yeah, to take it. Yeah, right. Um, cool. So that's that, that's just a minor change. Um, you're, obviously, you're still an old fur, but it's just it's not the trait that you have. Yeah. Graham, you're inquisitive. Uh, you just got you just changed tough and your natural bearings. Frankly, I have not seen you very inquisitive. Um, you have definitely been about trying to talk to creatures and stuff. But I'm not sure if I would call that being inquisitive. Uh, I've, mm -hmm. uh, I. He's use... more analytical, I think. Analytical? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and. Analyze so... the situations. And uh, I think there's actually one for that. I think it's rational, right? But um, even then, that's not really. I. What I'm thinking. I've always used inquisitive as like a helping thing. Uh, using inquisitive to build something, or uh, <laughs> just change it to clever. <laughs> just change it to clever. There we Good go. Fuck. Um, uh, what about jaded? Jaded. Well, now when I feel jaded, here jaded. Life in like... the god hardens some mice and makes them callous. This protects them from the folly of useful ideas and heroism, but also makes them stubborn regarding new ideas. That makes sense because you're like, hold on, what, let me look at your belief. Is your belief literally, oh, people have their reasons for their actions, but what was your belief before that? Wasn't like the mouse guard's job is on the, on the no, side. no, it was, it was always mouse guards. Um, any, anyone can like change their station or something like that. Yeah, so anybody can rise above their yeah. birth. But yeah. then I, <laughs> I didn't play to that when I tried to. Um, yeah. Um, and you used your birth to get a book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think you're quick-witted. 
and I'm gonna give you quick. I'm gonna change it to um, quick witted. Okay. Um. Mm, hold on. Quick witted mouse no. acts on right, instincts mate. without need of thought. So, or so my question, my question here is whether I give that if I give you quick witted or independent. I think independent. So, I mean, you... I think that works better for him. But. Yeah, I think I'm going to give you independent instead. Let's see. Um, hold on. I'm just I'm trying to think of like your other No. No, I'm giving you quick-witted. Quick-witted? Yeah. It's tough cuz we're in the winter session and you've only had a few Oh yeah. uh sessions to work with it. But um that's okay. I don't know. He's been a sassy little bitch the entire time I've known Graham. So like, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. To me. Uh, your your comebacks are make you quick witted. Um, okay. So you we have hard worker, generous, brave, and fiery. Is fiery level three for you now? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I just level it up in two. It was level two. Holy shit! I yeah, it was. Idea. I would use it twice a session on occasion. Yeah. Um. I'm, I think I'm, I'm thinking about changing generous. That makes sense. That I was looking at them before and thinking that would be the most likely to get changed. And I think I'm going to change generous to compassionate. Yeah. That makes total 100% sense. Uh, okay. Compassionate minds are able to see and understand a problem from their opponent's viewpoint. This is a great benefit in many situations. Whole... But it Seven makes episodes. duty difficult when ruthless action is called for. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right then. Um, so then, then we're done our we're done our traits and stuff. Now we do promotions. Hell yeah. Um. Before we get into not um people getting promoted and, and maybe one of us getting a cape or stuff like that. I think um, this is about midwinter and a uh, a caravan um, makes it into Lock Haven with quite a few new recruits, Henley. It's all the recruits that you asked for that, that all had their paperwork from you today. Oh, great. Perfect. There were like 12 of them, I think, total. Yeah, that so sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. So um, you see a couple of familiar faces in the crowd. Is Ingrid right. with them? No. A little disappointed, but neither neither is Chester. Yeah. But is that scientist lady there? I think is everyone. That, yeah. That, no, no, no. No, no not not her. The the one that we recruited from the town that was flooded. Flooding. Oh yeah, from from Dory Gift. Yeah. 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 In fact, she's like the one who's like most enthusiastic about getting off the uh or like come on like come on pups let's let's get going um, yeah the start of our brand new life ellie would probably like run up to her and greet her very enthusiastically oh nice yeah uh i think she would even remembers your name's like ellie oh it's so great to see you i was gonna look i was gonna look for you after we all got uh registered and all that stuff it's cool well, where's here waiting for you i can help you out oh that's awesome thank you so much Hey, um, and I think she wants to. Do you think you're getting promoted? I don't know. That's up to Sir Huey. Are you gonna get his? I we've heard that um, Huey's cloak belonged to um, you know someone else. Legends of the Guard, you know, back. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you're gonna get his cloak? Oh, no, no, I couldn't get his cloak. He's still a very capable guards mouse, and he has many. He does many things for a lot of mice still. He he still needs his cloak. Okay. Cool. Well, all right. Well, I'll see you around. And um, bye. Yeah. Cool. So I don't think anyone else is getting promoted. Um, Just there is one a retire. <laughs> well, I mean, no. There's um, besides like the tender paws, I, as yeah. in like uh, our party. I don't think anyone's Ew. getting promoted here. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Not okay. There is a there is a retire. Uh, no, you're you're getting promoted. Okay. Besides you, right? Like anyone, no one, no one besides you is getting promoted today. 
Uh, there, uh, a fellow guard captain, Huey, is getting, um, is retiring. Oh. Is it Chestnut? No. Oh. Remind me again who's Chestnut? My scout, the person who taught me scouting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think Chestnut is a guard captain at the same level as is Huey, it, though. Is it Finn? He was my Little mentor. Chestnut Wildebrand. No, uh, Finn, Finn, we've already met. Right? It doesn't Finn run a thing in Apple Loft? I think that was Chestnut, wasn't it? Oh, Chestnut was. Oh, no, no, you're right. You Apple Loft. Was... Yes. Apple Loft. Yep. Yeah, Finn, Finn's down in Apple Loft. Mm -hmm. um, he already retired. Um, no, um, yeah, yeah. Chestnut. Chestnut was. No, no, I'm sorry. Chest drinking Chestnut. Yeah. 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 Chestnut's the one that from in Apple Loft. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it is. So it is Finn. Um, Finn is retiring, Huey. Okay. It's it's uh, weird that it, it, his tender paw also made it to guard captain, and he must be fucking pretty old. He must be like that's what I mean. Like he's one of like the oldest mice around, then, right? Yeah, yeah, most likely. Um, he is responsible for a lot, overseeing a lot of the east, uh, north, south, east, western mm -hmm. um, provinces of the Mouse Guard territories. Yeah, uh, this includes Barkstone. Mm -hmm. um basically up to dawn like imagine dawn Ro make a triangle between dawn rock if you're looking at the map between dawn rock elmos and pebble brook like they're kind of that huge triangle of area um they okay. kind of oversee and him being very old um he, he they think that there's time for new blood to to rise the ranks however gwendolyn has not has decided for the meantime that um this year she's not going to appoint someone right away mm -hmm. she's going to see if um her patrol leaders um any other patrol leader mice are willing to step up this year and uh so so next winter she'll nominate a guard captain all right um, okay so that's something that we should all pay attention to um and then let's do our promotions all right so kika ellie gets promoted to guards mass from tender paw you were awarded a cloak from your mentor uh so this is a this is a very honorable ceremony you and the the dozen or so other tender paws with you you have to walk through the um the the hall of cloaks these are all of the cloaks um that have of that belong to um mouse guard who have come before you these are all mouse guard who fell in the line of duty um it's rows it's thousands um, since the start of the mouse guard, um, they're they're here and preserved uh, to give you a sense of gravity of of the ranks that you're joining when you're in a cloak, waiting for you um, at, at sort of like the raised dais. Like I imagine a um, a council. It has like I imagine like a marble floor. It's got etched with like a compass on it, right? And like in the middle is a the mouse with a banner um, that says, you know, it's not what you fight, but what you fight for. And um, Gwendolyn and your mentor. Huey are there. I'm ready to present you with your cloak. So, um, as she's walking up, she like yeah. probably has to keep herself from like stopping by every single cloak that she can recognize and like listing off who, what, like who the cloak belonged to and what the, <laughs> the person did. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, especially because like not all the cloaks are like per particular colors. You know, just how, um, we've seen Graham modify his cloak right yeah. to be like dusty and like more camouflagey you've seen people make more like audacious cloaks like more like plaid tartan patterns on them or like etched with like stars like like a night sky on there like like there's all these like legendary cloaks in, in addition to the the complete um uh rainbow of of colors and it, it's not assorted by color it, it's by time so it's just like this this like huge diversity of colors down the down the line so Master Mary broke the yellow. Arm wrestled two badgers at once. Yeah. So um, Huey, Huey's on up there, ready to present you with a cloak. Mm -hmm. So it's up to your mentor to decide what color cloak you, you deserve. It's very important. This is like the color of your lightsaber. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have thought about this a lot. Um, uh, and... <clears throat> let me sorry. Let me get into Huey's voice a little bit. Uh, uh, Ellie, I have uh, given much thought 
to the color of your cloak that you'll be wearing for the remainder of your career within the guard. And I had this specially made up for you. Um, I'll, I'll like open this little little box or whatever by my feet and pull out. It's a it's a it's currently a bright white uh, cloak, um, and I'll I'll sling it around your neck, sort of thing. Um, but the 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 part that's on your back is like a dark blue, um, and the the part that goes that faces outwards is white with a with a blue hemming around the outside of it too. Um, and it's like, uh, this is to represent your, well, compassionate nature to those that I would deem lesser of this, but you would deem not to be. Wear it with pride because you're a god mouse now. And there is not much that can stand in your way now. Also, uh, Hopefully the, the brightness of your cloak won't fade with time. She's just so overwhelmed with her emotion right now that she can't actually speak or move or think. Yeah. I think uh, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn has a few words about you as well and saying that um, you, she, she praises you for um, your ability to think things through and to take in all sides of, of situations. Um, and she mentions that that is the distinguishing feature that she looks for in for leaders of the mouse cart. And so she's very proud of you and, and the trajectory and to keep this up. And maybe one day you might be the next matriarch, right? Like that's you have like basically she's saying you have the material for it, right? Just it require years of honing it, but do it, do the, all the mouse territories a fail uh, a favor, and never forget that we strive for the greatest good. And she puts a hand on your shoulder and says, "Uh, we have I have one more surprise for you," and um she kind of points you towards a side entrance and um the two guards mice that are posted over there uh go open the door and it's your parents who 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 she has got brought here to lock haven in the winter uh to see you graduate so um yeah tenlian and and ethel are here they're crying they're so <laughs> proud of you um they they just have nothing but but good um, good smiles on their face and uh, they go to hug you as well and it's just a very sweet scene. Thank you so much. I'll say my best. She says like saluting yeah. while she's being hugged. Yeah, she's like stuck in like statue mode, saluting, Aww. trying to like not show like not like yeah. burst out with emotion in front of Huey and the matriarch. <laughs> Gwendolyn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's the part we we zoom out, and um, you are you are now promoted. Yay. That's pretty cool. Yay! Woo. So it's it's also winter, um, and the next part of the winter time is loose threads. Um, if there's anything you think we wanted to talk about in terms of things that we didn't get a chance to finish this year that we want to discuss for this year, types of conflicts we want to see. We can think of this as a time to be like, you can suggest to me um, mission ideas, like if we want to spend more time in the wilderness, if we want to spend more time doing more re reparations between towns, uh, that's, you know, like it, what that types of stuff. All right. So like, this would... is a time we can, we can talk about unresolved things that we haven't done and things we're looking forward to doing yeah. next year. I would have Spark Stone and the Black Daffodil. Boxstone. Sorry, what, what's wrong with Boxstone? You didn't like the, the finale that we gave Boxstone? What happened with Graham going to Pebblebrook? Like, he he dipped out on both Huey and Ellie to go to Pebblebrook with his friend. There'd probably be some reprimanding, I imagine. But he, well, 
uh, from what his friend was telling him, Pebblebrook was being attacked by weasels. It was. So and um. No, I, I well, I I I believe like no, there was a mission for them to do this, and you just rather than attend the ceremony, you decided to go out there with them instead. So yeah, whether it's reprimanding or not, um, I think that the unresolved question is. I think it was successful, but the question is whether or not um, Huey has anything to say to you about do that that choice of doing it, right? Yeah. Um, I would like. He to... was he was invited to that thing, and whether if everything was successful, he should have gone. So everything being said, he did kind of do a, a mouse guard faux pas, right? Yeah. To, to re remind you of the context there, Huey. Yeah. Um, I would like to see a large scale uh, conflict. Uh, either on the Sen border or internal. Okay. Like combat? Combat, conflict, uh, think uh, uh, volume think a massive one. undertaking? Yeah, think ma volume one of Mouse Guard. Um, and you have the idea of what I'm uh, putting at. Yep. Um, I, I really, I really liked that. I thought it was cool. Uh, I'd like to see something like that. But okay, no problem. I, I got it. Because uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, do we get any like, like, checks or anything that we can spend in this time? Because there's something. No, that... this is this is free play basically. If you wanted to. Okay. I mean, I would uh, like to have a new sword commissioned. Uh, made during the winter period. I don't know that if that's sense. possible or not. Yeah. Um, oh, it is. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, you have time to do it. And, okay. And it's not an issue. Yeah. You should make, like, the hilt look like, um, I don't know, something being held by, like, a raven's claw. <laughs> like, the blade is being held out by a raven's claw and, like, have, like, the handle, like, be its leg, almost look like that sure yeah I, I was also looking at doing like a like an oak branch for the handle or ah, something like that. it could be called raven's bane <laughs> all right yeah we'll go That's with a that good name for a sword we'll do that we'll, we'll, we'll go with that raven's bane that's good it's a little lighter cool. than my last sword but um it's uh yeah you know just as big yeah Uh, yeah. Um, what's there left of winter after this? Uh, that's that's about it. And then uh, if we're ready, we can take a short little break, and then we can jump in and do a spring session. That sounds good to me. All right, guys. Can, uh, can Graham? Hold on. Can Graham learn an instrument? Like, can can he learn that and get that as a tool? Like, have like a lute made out of like an acorn shell and and a stick? Oh yeah, 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 totally. You know, because I, I feel like he, he, he is the true definition of like a, a, a rover kind of deal. He'll go from town to town kind of singing, hitting on the girls and stuff, trying to keep the people, uh, the party spirits up a little bit. Why so you want to lose? We can play the bad pipes, though. Oh. <laughs> well, I like I love the idea that it's made out of an acorn. Yeah, shell. that he is good. Himself, so. I, I would just say like he would be he would start his training on that in the winter. So. Yeah. Maybe no, a, totally. Like a performance. A anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> here's a Wonder. And after yeah. all, he's a terrible singer. Yes, you're my Wonderwall. <laughs> yeah. So you have a you have your bow, um, your your book, and a um, and a lute. Sweet. All right. Yeah, cool. totally. Guys, cool. uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna I take you. Okay, Kika. Sorry, I I was just thinking. Um, Ellie would probably make an extra poultice charge thing, or maybe like I don't know, like tired or something. Or yeah, who handles thirsty. who handles all the um the new tenderfoils that come in? Like, how does that work? They all get divvied up, just how you had mentors and stuff and artisans. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to the new, the brand new tender paws that are coming in. They're all going to get assigned to an artisan. Remember, so they have to spend the first six months here uh, in Lockhaven doing um, all of the like grunt work. Ah. Wow. Do we get an NPC tender paw that 
<laughs> that we all get to fight over? No, no, because you guys are actually guards mice. You you go out and do things. Like these are the ones. These are the guards mice who are actually stay in Lockhaven, and you know these are like your your smiths, your your archivists, um, you know all apiarists. These are all the people who who actually like do the the, the work here. They're clothiers. Okay. Um, all right. So they they all get assigned, and you, they have to shadow somebody here. Okay. okay. Uh, let's let's jump into a break. Sprint mission, um, but on break, Huey brought up a really good point um, about him looking for a wife as some unfinished business. Yeah. So um, we, we're we're working on the details of that, and we want to go on talk about it on stream here. Yeah, yeah. So um, we settled on a few couple details about her, and then I think we're gonna work out the the finer points of it. Uh, so we settled on Huey's new wife. Um, her name is Sable. Uh, I don't have a last name for her yet, but um, Sable was. Um, she is uh what did i say 36 yeah 36 35 yeah yeah 35 um she's 35 uh she's she's a blondford mouse um originally from um ivydale she was the town captain so like the captain of the militia of ivydale um responsible for the defense of it uh for for many years and um i think i think uh henley may have actually known her first husband uh who passed away in the weasel wars yeah, so after that, probably. Um, yeah. So, what are you thinking? What are you thinking, Henley? I'm thinking that's a good idea, and uh, what what I'm thinking um, was the result of that was, you know, you know, Huey, look after my wife, and I'm like, okay, you know, uh, yeah. went there, uh, you know, uh, made sure she was taken care of, blah blah blah. I'm sure she was a lot more independent than what he was making her out to be, but. In the end, uh, you know, her advances went unrequited for a long time. Uh, this past year has given Huey some uh, perspective. Perspective, and uh, you know, he's come hat in hand, and you know, looking to start a family. I guess. Yeah. So uh, that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, um, I I think she was uh, maybe waiting. I don't know. I wouldn't say waiting, but like you know, she didn't have. Uh, she wasn't looking. I guess. Like uh, like, I don't know how how that works. How that would work, but um, you know, she she went um, unpartnered for the entire time after her husband. She was death. widowed. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, and yeah, and so you guys had some um, friendly relations beforehand, and then that this has grown into something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess uh, starting in spring, uh, you know, given the fact that we've known each other for so long already, it's like it, marriage was an easy thing. Yeah, uh, totally. So not only um, does Huey have a new sword, but he also has a new ring on his little paw finger. I don't know if mice do oh. that, but like... Yeah, yeah, why not? It's more. It's uh, probably think... more functional as like an earring. I don't know. Like, is that uh, law? Yeah, it totally could be an earring. Um, what do you think? I I like the idea that it's a it's a, some sort of token, a representation of your love. Yeah. Whether yeah. that's um bound by a ring or encircled with, a, I mean, a piece of jewelry seems like the most common one, right? Same. Iron gauntlets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I think an earring would probably like be the thing that sticks out the most on Huey. So. Yeah, let's do that. Hold on, but Huey's a little bit more practical than that. Okay. Uh, what if what if Sable had and this happened around the same time you got your sword commissioned? Maybe you maybe it's represented on your sword. Mm. It's inscribed on the ba uh, bottom of the. Uh, oh, I would say that. Um, or not? Maybe I don't. Yeah. No, I, I like that um, sentimental value to the sword because last time it just flew away from me. So like, like, yeah, like she got a commission for you while you were here in winter, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So, we'll so the that. sword is is in and of itself special that that I was commissioned by your wife as, and this is your token. 
Yeah. So it has even more double so because I love the idea that she's like, now make sure you don't lose this one. As she, you know. Okay. As as he hands it over to you. Um, yeah. After I sort of imagine that once Ellie like found out about this, she would like keep giving Huey like her extra baklava to give to his to Sable. Oh. So anytime just give it smuggling over gifts and treats. Oh, so thoughtful. Yeah. All right. Nice. So I'll All right. write down um, here. Sable Oak. Yes. Sable Oak. Um, your new wife. All right. So let's talk about our first mission today. So this is early, early spring. This is the first time things are getting back together. We are in spring of 1151. Snow is still on the ground. Things are still haven't really thawed just yet. So things are going to be kind of rough. We uh, received dispatch from the small town of Elmos on the western sides between um, Barkstone and Spruce Tuck. It's a town built into the our, uh, oldest, largest moss tree, uh, elm tree in, in the Mascar territories. Um, they have a lot of like herbal stuff that they grow there. Um, they need extra food supplies because they've been, they're pretty much at the bottom of their barrel through the winter. And so they need you to deliver their supplies um, as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, um, escorting with you. Where did you uh, say it was? Uh, sorry. You said it was north? No, uh, west. west. Southwest, technically. Okay. Uh, I'll mark on the map. Purple, so we can see it. There. We're going to Elmas there. Okay. So, um, the way we're going to do this is that because time is of an essence, it's a matter of getting there in time so things don't go bad to Elmas with the supplies. Okay? Okay. Um, this is going to be, this is, we're actually going to do a journey conflict. And um, down below, I have some stuff here for, for how a journey conflict works. These are the weapons that you employ for the journey conflict. Um, in addition to, um, like, you guys just traveling out, you have a cart with a beetle with all the food, granary supplies, as well as a couple um, laborers, right, to, to come along and, mm -hmm. and work the carts for us, okay? So um, so that's that's what we have together. This is your convoy that you're delivering this. So you have to travel through early spring, cold snow. Um, it's The paths aren't here anymore. You know, it's months have gone by, so you're really just forging out on your own. It's not fun. So And this is going to be a conflict. It's going to be against spring itself. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so what's, what leads a conflict like this? It can't be fighter, right? No, no, it won't be. It won't be fighter. Uh, so for a journey conflict, it's going to be probably Pathfinder. Okay. Who's got the highest Pathfinder? Um, Graham, you're up. I have a Pathfinder of two. Okay. Yeah, and you have a higher two. HP than me as well. Even though I have Pathfinder three, your health is yeah, probably a lot higher. Yeah, my than health then. is four. So, I mean, it's roughly the same role then, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll let you go ahead and do this. All right, so I'll lead. Uh, I would say that I'm looking at what we need maps. I I, I would I would say that the uh, first edition Weatherfield Exploration Guide would have uh, maps from Lock Haven down to. Oh man, what's the what's the city's name? El Elmas. Elmas. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so could we use my exploration guide as, uh, maps? Isn't the whole point and... Oh, that totally counts. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Eric, but isn't the whole point of, uh, doing this stuff after winter that we have to redo all the routes in the Pathfinder books and stuff like that? Yeah. It, eventually. Mm -hmm. oh. So let me bring you over to the conflict page and we do it this way so we remember everything. Okay. So, um, we are no longer driving off raccoons. <laughs> Feuds. Yes. So, um, you could, so thank you. So you're going to be the guard captain or you're going to be the captain of the conflict. Okay. Um, so then we're going to be rolling originally it's Pathfinder for the disposition for this test. And this represents our morale. This is going to represent the strength of our, of our group. Um, but right before we do that, we're going to have to write up our goal. I mean, the one I'm thinking of for the group would obviously be get there with supplies on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. 
Deliver the pizza. Yep, deliver. <laughs> yeah, we're doing SpongeBob. Krusty Krab pizza. Um, yep, okay. And Spring is going to um, wear you down and get stuck. God damn it, Spring. So Spring's goal is to wear you down and get you stuck in the middle of nowhere. Spring's um, goal is to it, spring into action and to wear you it's down. It's to suck it, Trebek. Um, so, like I said, this is very, very early. It's very, it's it's rough. I'm going to roll uh, my six dice for Spring. Okay. That's oh, I can use hey. nine. So I add those three successes on top of its nature. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's nine, and strength is nine. And now you do a Pathfinder test to determine what yours is, and you're adding this to health. Do I? Okay. I can help, right? With Scout? Yep. Um, okay. Scout, Weather Watcher, Pathfinder, all all make sense here. Cartographer. Uh, uh, yeah. Trees, I'll, looking I'll, ahead. Plus I'll I help your supplies, I like yeah, and your supplies count for this test, right? Your, your supplies count as a die for this test here. Um, I'll, your I'll, your map. I'll have to get it updated. <laughs> I at least know the way to Ivydale. Oh, it's uh, it's right before Spruce Tuck, so I would kind of know where it is. It's in yeah. between I, uh, Lock Haven and Spruce Tuck, so that's my hometown. That's what I'm saying. Like the map is giving you supplies here, because map and history of this area. Oh, I'm gonna invoke my swanky new uh, trait Shit. natural bearings mm -hmm. there you go mm -hmm. playing you the go. video game i like it i'm gonna help so with your... weather watcher by the way all right okay. weather watcher so so it's health... mostly just been like you know uh judging the right time to leave in the morning um making sure Do you that... think the weather is getting worse or better i think it's gonna get worse before it gets better to be honest with you okay Good to know. Um, and the ob is three? Yes. Um, no, 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 the no, ob no, is zero. zero. Oh, it's ob zero. Yeah. 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 This, this doesn't even count as a test for you for like okay. advancement. This is just calculating your, your um, strength yeah, of your journey. Yeah, this is why I have my traits so high in usage, yeah. but very little actual skills leveled because I yeah, kept yeah. being the captain <laughs> for every single... I don't think anyone else yeah. was a fucking captain the entire seven sessions that we had. So, no. so three plus four would be seven. Yep. So you're rolling seven dice. Damn. And you're going to add that to your health score. So you don't roll your health dice. You're just going to no, add no, no. the number he of successes. He got three you get successes. And oh. he has four HP. Sorry. All right. Well, you, you, you did get a six, though. Yeah. Um, so, um, and also, if you, you have, have a relative trait, you can reroll three yeah. of them. So. Oh. You have four fate and no persona. Oh, he has no persona? Okay, then. Yeah. Right, take it back. You can't do that. Um, but you have you have fate, so um, if you have a relevant wise, you can re-roll one of those failures. Um, and also because you have a six, you can luck with a fate and, and expand that if you wanted to. Um, otherwise, you can just be cool with uh, with a seven. I'll be cool with a seven. Cool. Look at this guy okay. failing our rolls. Unbelievable. Doesn't use no, all of his... That works for us. Doesn't use all of his fate and persona on one roll like the old god captain used to do? Oh my god. Well, you're still the guard captain because I wasn't promoted. That's true. I can't get promoted. Because okay. you don't know how to rub elbows with the higher ups. It's true. You don't. I, I feel like I have a certain rapport with Gwendolyn. Like she looks at me and she thinks that, oh my God, here comes Graham, but she knows I mean good. Sure. All right. So um, remember how we reflect what this is going to look like. Yeah. I'm going to try this. Um, once we've put down our three cards, we're going to reveal all our cards together and kind of get an idea of what the picture looks like for, for what's going on here. But I can okay. tell you as a journey, um, like you should be describing your actions in terms of survivalism, willpower, fortitude. Um, and I will be describing things as bad weather, um, wilderness changing to you um, and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like a montage of our journey. Right. This is like kind of Oregon Trail. Like imagine like an Oregon Trail like through through um through the snowy parts. So not not good. Meet a man named Terry, call his mother fat, die of dissing Terry. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Um so you pick your card. Um technically the conflict captain does pick everyone's cards, but um, obviously talking with your group is, is something you gotta do. Okay. 
Um, below the below the test part, I listed I added the journey thing again for all the weapons you can wield in this conflict as well. So keep that in mind for when we go. Hmm. All right. All right. Our cards are down. Right. We yep. flip. Maneuver versus maneuver. An attack versus something. And I'm attacking as well. So um, what is your defending? Yeah, defending. And maneuvering. Okay. So you're trying to. Um, so what does your maneuver look like in a journey conflict? What, what does it kind of look like before? Because defending is easy. Defending is like bunkering down. Yeah. And taking and like resting and recuperating on a journey. So like, what is what does our maneuver look like in this conflict? Like, is that you trying to take a shortcut? Uh, yeah. To give you some give you some ideas. So once again, you're going through the snow. Um, I imagine there's more fallen timbers here. Also, since things were wet, there's far more streams. So you have to keep circumventing them and going around. Um, and that kind of stuff because obviously frozen water and mice don't mix so um, think of that kind of stuff right um, there's not a lot of foliage around it's all kind of dead because winter and there's a lot of snow around but there's like like I said fallen logs uh, and that kind of stuff to work with so what, what do you think this looks like I feel like Graham would lead them to like on shortcuts uh, that he kind of feels is towards the right direction uh, when he would come to a stream he would roll a log over the stream kind of making an impromptu bridge mm, um, okay or uh try to find the most shallow area of the new stream and see if they can wheel the cart through that and stuff nice yeah that makes perfect sense because yeah because you're carrying this cart you can't be as maneuverable as you want to so yeah okay so we're making this best we can all right so uh, a maneuver in this conflict is a pathfinder test sweet all right so um, in a journey conflict, um, I'm allowing, I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna give you an option here. Uh, Pathfinder works as well, but also survival, I think because the way you described it, survivalist makes sense too, or scientist, okay. right? Like this is you fashioning things together because there's no path anymore, right? Yeah. So like, if you want to use survivalist instead, that makes perfect sense here. Definitely, definitely survivalist. Cool. And uh, keep in mind when you're building this test that you have those supplies to list from the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then so we got, get ready to make our rolls. I got my uh, map. I already used my trait. Yeah. Um. So, so like the plan here looks like because you did maneuver, defend, maneuver. To me, um, and maybe you guys have a different idea, but to me, it seems like the plan here that like. Back in Lock Haven before we set out, it looks like we're trying to get to a safe place for rest that you know of. Mm. And then from there, like the next leg of the journey. Because that to me, that's what a defend would be. Like, so when we get to the like whatever, whatever rest it is, get there, rest up, that's our halfway point, and then we can finish the last leg of the journey. Okay. Right? Like yeah. to me, that's what it feels like. And obviously, um spring, spring is kind of like the skies maneuvers, the skies are getting darker right and um the attacking would be um like really really cold rain yeah right so like basically the weather is trying to fight you here um while you try to make it to this this middle ground right mm -hmm. that's what i'm mm -hmm. thinking is going on right now fictionally okay. as we describe our things okay uh can people help me with this maneuver yes uh okay. this is this is a this is actually a versus test um we're so maneuvers, are, maneuvers versus and um so you're gonna be against my nature so i'm gonna roll six dice and whatever the number of dice you get is, that's your obstacle. And this is this is once again, this is either a survival or, or a pathfinder test. I think you chose survival. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, so um, that's so, hunter cool. so you, or weather watcher I... or survival. So. Yeah. Yeah, I can help with survival or hunter, either or. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll help you. Survivalist. With survivalist, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you're both helping like move the logs around to like make the bridge for the cart to go over mm -hmm. the streams and stuff. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so what what are you Log. equipping yourself for this uh, for this test here? I'm equipping my uh, maps, kind of deal, uh, maybe to see uh, where the land was. Because when the snow melts, it would create new streams, mm -hmm. but the land's still there. Uh, I don't think that it would have been worn down that much, so he no. probably could say, hey, this is where kind of like uh, a higher road would be kind of deal. Yeah, so, where the hills would be, yeah, through the yeah. snow. Perfect, okay. So let's see. Oh, I have to wait for you to roll. Oh, we're going to roll together. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm um, ready when you are. Three, two, one, go. We tie. 
Um, but you have a six. So you can. So what happens when we tie is um, two different things happen. Uh, we can either um, you can spend a, tr a point right now. You can spend one of your traits, you a trait that you didn't use five here. Fives. Yeah. <laughs> so here's what happens, right? So um, you can either spend a trait right now to break the tie in my favor, which means that I win this test with one additional success, um, and you earn two checks on the player's turn for today's session. Uh, option number two. You try to push and win this in your favor by spending a fate point to reroll one of those sixes, or or spending a fate point to use a wise to try to break this in your favor and rerolling a die to um, that additional success to make you win, or we go to um, a tiebreaker roll where I roll my um, I roll my nature again and you're gonna roll health and people can help you. Eric, and that's the tiebreaker roll. Before we do anything else, don't we need to do like goals and stuff? We do have our goals down. Do we? Get to Elmos with supplies on time. Okay. I mean. Oh, you mean? Oh no no. Oh goals. wait wait yeah yeah. You mean player goals? Yeah. Oh shit! You're absolutely right. Uh, we we totally skipped the player goals. Yeah, we did. Um yeah. So your goals were to um so Elmos is is having a grain shortage. Um, they're out of food. Uh, so you're delivering an emergency supply. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, I guess my goal would be to uh, you know, um, uphold the image of the god, deliver on time. Yeah. Mine Good would shit. be get the grain to Elmas with my survival skills. That's a uh, good one. Yeah. Let's see. I think I I think I'm going to take a hit on this one by using natural bearings against. Can I invoke that like that? Absolutely. What does that look like? Um, oh, something like, I know a shortcut, guys. Follow me. And there's a giant fucking tree, like a little literal tree. Yeah, in, in the fucking yeah. Way. It's a wall, right? It's like a, the fallen tree, being like, "Well, that's not good." It's like uh, <laughs> trying to find the secret door to Moria, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. "I know where that is." And it's like, Ooh. "Okay, well, um, there's kind of a problem." I like the idea that this... we're just standing in front of this thing and the wind is blowing and you, and you just turn around and be like, this wasn't here before. <laughs> yeah. I have no knowledge of this. this. Yeah, ex exactly. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. You have no recollection of this place. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So um, I get one. So you earn two checks for this for the player's turn. Um, I get one success, so I'm going to use impede with my maneuver, So um, which makes sense because my attacking is going to be... Um, the sky opens up and it's really cold rain and it's trying to, to bog you guys down from moving. And obviously the, the initial blasts are, are way harder than, than before. So it's, 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 if the ground, whatever solid ground you thought you had around you is now completely very soggy and cold, right? It's, it's moving, it's moving the snow and the ground together um, as it thaws. So um, you're going to get a minus one die to this roll here. Huey, you are defending, mm -hmm. um, defending in this type of conflict once again, would be like survival because you're making a shelter. Um, we or haven't what are you lost thinking? scientists. We, we haven't lost any disposition yet. Is there any way to gain additional disposition? Or is no. it stay at seven? Okay. No, it's kind of it's kind of muted. But you also are resisting my attack by doing defending because this is a versus test. Okay. So you are aiming to reduce any damage I do to you. So here's what I want to do. Uh, as the wind picks up, you said it gets rainy and soggy, right? Yeah. Um. And it's still going to freeze after that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, by nightfall? Yeah, yeah. you're going to need to make a fire when you, when you rest, so, for so sure. So here's what I think. Uh, if there's still snow around, I assume there is a lot of it. I'm a, yeah, I, I of course mean, there yeah, is. Okay, just checking. <laughs> I was waiting on a response. There. I was like, eh, is there? I was like, oh, yeah. um, so I think uh, what we do is we borrow. We borrow. Um, and, uh, we make like a, uh, we fortify the inside by like melting the snow to make like, uh, basically like an igloo, uh, yeah. underneath. And we make it big enough to fit the cart in and we, uh, weather, we weather it out, um, at least until the morning. Uh, yeah. cause you know, going through this, this storm at night would mean that we risk losing all of the, uh, grain. Yeah. Um, totally. So I think in terms of skills, we are looking at survivalist. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, making the shelter, totally. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think would probably be the right skill there. Yeah, so your survivalist, um, obviously helping would be weather watching, um, scouting, and survivalist. Mm-hmm. Um, and because you're building an igloo, survivor, uh, scientist maybe too. Okay. I don't have scientists though, so. But I mean, you're making survivalist roles, so you don't have to worry about that. This is this is for Graham and, and oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Ellie, how they want to help. I'll be helping with survivalist. The log rolling and crushing them, getting dislodged from this is actually totally on the table. If they get destroyed by this, is that seems pretty reasonable. Oh, jeez. Well, that sucks. Okay, so Ellie, are you helping? Or I will help with legends of the guard wise to tell them about the time Great Norber of the North camped out in freezing rain by constructing a shelter of ice and snow and sticks and dirt and mud. Listen, tales are gonna <laughs> tales are gonna warm our backs when we're in the igloo, not before. So do you wanna help build this or not? <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> yeah okay survivalist <laughs> okay okay um, um do you have a weapon equipped i do uh the supplies yeah so i'm gonna sword <laughs> uh, i'm gonna say uh it's like a shovel or something equivalent uh maybe sure. even like a scoop um so uh yeah Huey's a lot more practical this time around rather than just walking around with a sword and a flask full of old ask apple cider <laughs> all right so this is versus yeah because defend yeah uh okay so uh i'm ready to make my roll if you are totally I'm ready as well i'm rolling right. mine one success wow two successes crushed all right so you, you trump me um, you don't heal anything because you don't have anything, but you don't do take any damage. Yeah. And uh, so, so this this the night goes uh, uneventfully. Your your igloo holds. Uh, good good choice. But now you have to make up some time, and then we go over to El um, Ellie. So the rain hasn't given up though. Um, it keeps coming down. Um, and so an attack versus a maneuver is also a versus test. Um, I would like to use scout to maybe climb up this fallen tree and get a good look of our surroundings to be able to guide uh, my compatriots. So, so yeah. we don't run into any fallen logs as shortcuts. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. <laughs> Love it. OK. Um, so you're helping with Scout. Yes. So um, I think Hunter and Weather Watcher are the, the natural helpers here. I'll help her with uh, Hunter. Uh, weather watcher for me. Okay, making it seem if the weather is going to get worse or anything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, um, six dice, Can zero, I... uh, one. What's that? And I can't invoke a trait going. You can. This, or can I? Yeah, you can. You can invoke a trait positively or negatively. Yeah, I'm going to use driven positively for this. Sure. As you uh, scurry up this log to get a good um, yeah. look around. In the rain. So just. I'm curious, Ooh. Eric. You mentioned wow. when we had com. when we had level three traits, yeah, that we could yeah. use them at the at the end of a test to add a success. You know how um, Graham and I tied with our nature test. Yeah. If you didn't use bold in that die roll test, brave. you could yeah. you could brave. Um, you could use um, brave at that point to break the tie in your favor. So it only works if we break if it has a tie, not if we're behind to go to a tie. So we can't like tie it up. No, no, it would if you got so so if you had four successes, mm -hmm. right? So if you had four successes, um, and you had that brave trait, it would bring you up to five. Okay, so no. but what I'm asking is like, let's say I got four, you got five. Can I then use mm -hmm. my brave trait to make it a tie? No. Okay, that's what I need to know. No, you can only use it to break it in your favor if you already had a tie. Which okay. is like basically so Graham Graham ate one there, which was a really really smart play. He used a different trait negatively to earn himself two checks, because that's the only thing you can do with traits that aren't level three. Uh, you can use them to break them negatively and earn yourself two player checks for mm -hmm. the player's turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, otherwise, you have to do the fate points or wises to get you out of the mess, or or go down to the uh, the tiebreaker roll. Yep. So that's why it's so powerful. 
it lets you get your way that high, which is super good. Okay, so um, Ellie, you caught you scamper up there. I've rolled one success. You got one success, uh, but you also got a six. So if you wanted to change that, um, with a fate, yeah. 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 Okay, I'll do that with a fate. You have like nine hundred thousand fate. You have nine thousand fate, right? You have eleven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I'll, basically I'll nine thousand. So. Um, do you have a do you have a relevant wise? You have Legends of the Guard wise. Legends of the Guard wise is which you already relevant. mentioned. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. Here's our. Here's what I would say as a suggestion. Um, what was the new wise? No, never mind. That you got? What was the new wise that you picked up? Politics wise. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. I like it. Yeah. Cool. So um, you don't have to give me another story. It's the same story, right? Um, yeah. So if you, you can re you can either reroll a failure or or spend a fate or do both. Uh, so you can either spend a fate to reroll a failure, spend a fate to reroll that six, um, or spend two fates to do both of those. Heck, it, I'll do both because I have okay. a million fate. Seems legit. So uh, you're... should I do them separately? Or yeah. Just... Okay. You should. You can do them in whatever order you want, but there is clearly a better order. You're fucking with me, aren't you? Reroll, no, reroll the there's... fate first. All right. So, so okay. spend, spend. So, what you want to do is you want to reroll your failures first. Yeah. And I'm, then, I if you get an extra that. six, you you spend uh, the yeah, fate. Yeah, I'm two. gonna reroll the failure yeah. first. Okay. All okay. right. Didn't help you. So then you spend an extra fate to uh, reroll explode that six. your dice. Yeah. What is no. with me in threes? That sucks. Oh my god, I got you rolled four threes. Si six total six. threes. Not oh. enough. Um, so, your next options. We can go to a tiebreaker roll, where you're going to roll health um, against against spring, or we can do uh, spend a trait to spend a different trait to break the tie in your favor, uh, in the opponent's So, since uh, she leveled favor. up, does her like natural stat, state, uh, stats change? Well, they don't. No, like, no. Nope. Okay, so you'll that's be rolling. Just, that's the starting thing. Yeah, you'll be rolling six versus six because your health is six, right? So, um, uh, and you can help, right? Yeah, other people can help. Yeah. So you can potentially be rolling eight die um, versus yeah. six. And yeah. these tiebreaker rolls that use health and will and nature and stuff are really, really these good. These things like, count as tests. These things yeah. count as tests for improving your, your stuff. I'm gonna have so much health. All right, let's do a tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. So I guess you, so I'm helping. Who's helping me? I'll help. I will help. Ooh, I got four successes. Do it. I still put ob one though, right? You put oh, ob what? four because that's what Eric got. Okay. Yeah, that's what I just four. got. So you have to beat four. Not enough. Uh, four. So I win. Uh, I win by one, and I do some damage to you. Yeah. Slip um, and fall. Yeah, well, you mark can't a get failure for your health, I guess. So, yeah, wow. and we continue. All right. I'm gonna get seven health and be the burliest mouse there is. Yeah, you, I think you slip off the log. <laughs> Whoop. Um, Donk. Yeah, your nice white uh, coat uh, uh, cape is all muddy. <laughs> like I like you oh. come back to the igloo, and I'm just like. You, you, okay. muddied, you muddied your cape. What? How did, how did you muddy your cape? <laughs> All right. Um, I want to go first, if that's okay with you. Yeah, go for it. Um, and I'm going to uh, choose this one. Okay. Let's flip. Cool. DJ Let's flip, flip that Adelphia. shit. Flip that shit. Oh no. Got him. Oh no. <laughs> That's the opposite of what I wanted. Got All him. right, you guys Got win. Him. You do. Um, I was gonna say that there is a the log gives way, but clearly, clearly we've already moved. That, like yeah. it does that. It does that weird thing where like you know it's just like dramatic music. A log rolls down, crushes. The, the cave from like a distance right because it zooms out yeah. and how small it is but we're already all the way over there you know yeah like, but then then it, then it zooms like, out and you guys are in the foreground and you're in the foreground by the way it's like if you didn't leave beforehand that would have been you guys there so well done yeah 
Um, so you get to do free damage to me. Free damage. Uh, just free, free damage .com. Um Once again, this is a Pathfinder test, though. So yeah, you're yeah. attacking with Pathfinder. Got it. And this is you guys um, just freaking just hoofing it, right? Yeah. You guys are, are um, stomaching through the rain. Uh, yeah, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to use Pathfinder, and then I'm going to do a Guards on it as well. Sure. We're, we're, paint me that picture, though. Oh, maybe not and Guards on it. Maybe don't, not Yeah, right, exactly. Oh, right? Maybe... I'm not letting, you're not allowed to pick a trait unless you can justify it fictionally. Uh... Also, don't forget your um, your weapons and equipping it. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, I don't know how a sword can things. help with Pathfinder. It's not weapons. Weapons are journey weapons. I listed them underneath the uh, the test aid at the bottom, not on your character sheet, but on uh, the uh, G on the roll twenty page, the, uh, the roll twenty mat. I listed the uh, the four. All right, so I imagine it's uh, all right. The right stuff. That sounds good. to Yeah. Me. Which makes sense because you left Lockhaven and this was an emergency mission. Mm -hmm. So like you having snowshoes and stuff would make sense. Yeah, right. they're like little they're like little nuts as well. Like I've seen them in yeah, the book. They are something. little acorns. They are acorns. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um So uh uh I think I think um though I'm going to be using uh Defender uh for the first time. And I like the idea that it's it's more about like you know, my my old my old mouse fur is like not sitting right for some reason. I was like, all right, I don't care what your problems are. We're leaving right now. Like I pull people out, pull the cart out, pull the, the laboring mice out who are like, no, I want to stay in the igloo and all that sort yeah. of shit. And I was like, no, we're leaving. We've rested enough. Time to go. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then we're Get like, in the car, kids. <laughs> we're like walking up a hill and then like a giant like uh, log just goes and rolls over yeah. the thing. And I'm just like. I'm not gonna say that I told you so, but perfect. Yeah. Ellie just um, Ellie just like looks back at the log and then back at Huey and is just like, "Huh? Did you look at that?" Yeah. You Good don't get to my there. you don't get to my age in the guard without having a a, a sense feel for, for these, these things. things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. awesome, uh, cool. By okay. the way, I'm really liking this um, reveal all three cards now after we set them down. Yeah, I feel like this gives a yeah. much better picture. Uh, um, so, so yeah, my ability rating is three. Uh, I'm getting one from the right stuff. Are you two helping? You're, you're not. Hold on, hold on, Henley. You're not getting a die from the right stuff. You're getting a straight up success, dog. Oh, shit. All right. Who's helping? Well, bam. I'm, I'm helping. helping. Yeah, two help. All right. With a That's why, like, if you use your your brave as well, you would just be guaranteed two successes, in addition to the rest of your dice. You know, what, like, you that's know how that let's, works. Let's actually use brave there in that in that instance then, because I got three of them. Did you well, say I can describe use how that works? Um, it's it's pretty much the same thing, you know. Like, first stands up on end. I'm, uh, does something doesn't feel right. I want to get out of there. Uh, and you know, now that my brave's level three, it's almost like it's almost like a spider sense for me in some in some weird way. So, you know, get everyone up, leave. Uh, you know, I look back one final time at the at the nice safe igloo with maybe like a little candle we left in there. And it looks warm and inviting, and we're just like, no, we're leaving. You know, <laughs> that's yeah, he's braving that storm. Yeah. 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 So, uh, okay. Once more into the breach for sure. Okay. Did cool. you roll? Yeah. No, you haven't. Um, I don't have to roll. Okay. You roll because you're just holding him down. This is an attack for his faint, dog. This uh, is an attack for so faint. That's two extra there, so five damage. Yeah. So you just, just, yeah, just roll. All right. So you just, you straight up five damage to me, to, to spring. No. Take that spring. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But now, now we're into the, um, the stretch here, and we're both going to end up doing damage to each other. As you, uh, as you push on through the, the, the cold rain and the, the wind. You're right, though. The weather has, it got worse before it got better. Um, the, the rain has dry, uh, died down now. Um, you guys are in sort of the, the, the flat part of the, of the terrain, uh, where you're going to now, uh, to, to the El Elmas. So like you're past if we're, I mean, I don't I have the map open real quick, but, um, where we needed to go. So like between, so you're past Ivydale and, and you're past the, uh, the, the branch to Copperwood. You're going like, this is, this is home country near Spruce Tuck, right? This is, this is the part where, you know, by heart it's the flatland part. Um, you just gotta, this is the, this is the home stretch, right? We just gotta make it. Um, however, um, the, the weather is, is, is cold and biting. Um, and the snow of course is, is snow. 
So you guys have to just trudge through there, and it's going to do whatever it can to stop you. Okay. So we're, this is just going to be just a brutal blow to, a blow to both of us. So let's make a little, let's get ready to make our tests. Okay. This is uh, Pathfinder, right? Attacking is Pathfinder. Yeah. I'll help with Pathfinder. And so what does this look like? Uh, I'm helping with Pathfinder. Let's, let's go. Uh, let's scout. Do... So two for Pathfinder. Uh, we're getting two help. Uh, I think I'll invoke my tough uh, trait on this to give me uh, an ad like a, an additional die. Uh, f he recalls that um, uh, Falker decided to uh, treat Graham to a little bit of a uh, adventure past the scent border over into wild country but what he didn't know uh and this is during the winter what he didn't know that uh when they set up camp and falker woke up early in the morning and left graham for about a month <laughs> and came back and at this time like Graham was all like fuzzy. He, he he kind of like looks like Billy from Treasure Island, kind of. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. And, and he's like he's lying under a tree, and, and he's and he's looking at this bug that he's going to eat, kind of deal. And he's waiting for it to come down. And all of a sudden, Falker kind of like comes up uh, over him and says, "So, uh, you dead?" Nice. And, and 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 that kind of gets uh graham kind of in the mindset of okay it's snow what do we got to do all right we've got to keep warm so he kind of like bundles his uh bundles his cloak around him and he kind of shows uh uh ellie how to take her cloak and kind of turn it into like a tabard kind of deal uh to kind of like provide more body warmth uh, i would assume Henry yeah knows how to uh not Henley, uh Huey already knows how to do I'm, it. I'm wearing like full armor, man. I don't need to do that yeah, shit. He, like, <laughs> he's got he's got armor and like, shit. Like you don't like maybe you take a closer look. I've got like fur sticking out from underneath my armor, you know like Yeah. So we got three swanky dice additional and we're going so it's a versus test. Yep. Right? Yep. Oh, I'm rolling six dice. It's an independent because it's oh, sorry. It's yeah, yeah, it's independent. So um, this counts as a success for you on, in terms of things as long as you get over a one. We just don't you need Eric bonus. to get six successes. So. Okay, uh, I do two damage to you. Mm -hmm. Bring you down to four out of seven. And you do three damage to me, but you still got two sixes here. So do you want to fate that stuff? Yeah, I'm going to spend a fate to make that stuff go splody splode. Yep, splode splodes those sixes. See what happens. Or, that, that, might that I suggest, because um, so. there's only four left, you're doing three damage. If you give Ellie a chance to roll as well, she can up, she can have a, she can test one of her skills as well. If I spend one fate point and make one six explode, and you get it, and you get a success, then that ends the conflict. Yeah. Oh. The thing is, I don't yeah. know Pathfinder, so I'd be beginners locking it. Oh. But it, yeah, but as long as you get Vinny, one success, though. Yeah. As long as you get one yeah, success, it doesn't matter. So, all right, I'm gonna leave it to Ellie. Go for it. Perfect. Cool. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Pathfinder. Would Pathfinder be will or health? Health for sure. Health. health. Okay. So, so um, yeah. you half. So, so I we were doing this wrong earlier. You half your dice. Um, you have your traits and help dice as well, but you do not have you, if you spend your persona to tap your nature. You do oh. not have that stuff. You, I will tap all that my stuff nature gets, for this. Okay. It makes sense. You're get some overkill. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Are you guys? You guys are helping, right? Yeah. 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 Helping with the pathfinder. No, I'm not helping. Um, here, I want to ask you this this question. Do you think? pushing yourself through here to get to Elmos, is this within your mouse nature of escaping, climbing, hiding, and foraging? I mean, how, how close is the town that we just passed? It's a ways away. 
Is it so yeah. this is the closest to go for a while? Yeah. Yeah, it would probably be to escape the okay. rain and sure. the harsh weather. Yeah, I was thinking that too, but I wanted to ask you as a player if that's if you feel that's justified or not. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yep, for sure. All right, so um, your health is six dice, so you're rolling at least three. Then you're tapping your nature, which I think adds three dice to it, right? Yep, and then I get another one because of half of the health. Yep. Health, um, I mean. Yep. So that's... They're, and they're helping you with nature. Yeah. Because um, nature helps nature. Or, uh, excuse me, their health. Yeah, health, health helps health. Yeah. <laughs> Tongue twister for the night. Health helps health. Uh, help, yeah. helps help. Let's just leave that zero. Yeah. Boom. Bingo. Hey, Nailed four. it. Okay, so you win. But um, did it, guys. Spring was able to do some damage to you. I'm um, getting over there, right? It got you to ha about half. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Um, I probably injured from the fall in some way. <laughs> Ooh, that would be really hard. Yeah, you know what, Ellie? I think I think that makes the most sense. Out of that whole conflict... I think you brazenly going trying to climb that thing. Um, Might I also add uh, injured? Yeah, you getting injured from that seems pretty reasonable. What well, I would also add that maybe Graham needs to take a hit too because of his uh, fiasco with the shortcut thing. Uh, maybe angry that or something along those lines. Uh, would he be angry or hungry? Would be the question I have. Yeah, I, I love I love the fact that Ellie got injured from that and was kind of like keeping it from the group while they were pushing through. Uh, maybe, but yeah. So you so Ellie so the result of this is definitely going to be conditional. Uh, yeah, I think Ellie, you get injured from it, uh, which is pretty rough. Um, and then um, Graham either be, yeah I think I think Graham you, be, you being hungry would make more sense I think than angry. So you just you gain the hungry condition. Oh boy, I'm hungry. <laughs> but you guys make it to the food. Um, you make it to. Um, you bring the food into it to Elmos, and of course, uh, the, the governor there is is super super thankful. Um, his name is uh, Aster. He's uh, just like a like tan fur. Um, he has a uh, he wears a what, what are they called? Uh, what's a Sherlock Holmes cap? What are they called? Deer hunter? Duck hunter. Duck hunter. Yeah, he's wearing like the duck hunter hat, uh, as well as a um a, obviously because it's cold and rainy, he's got like a big huge cloak on. Uh, not like mouse guard once again, but like a just a huge uh, feathered um, coat to keep him warm. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, cup. we're so happy that you guys were able to get our message, and not a moment, um, and not a moment too soon. And I um, limp over to him and salute. Yeah, I got. I kind of look over at Elliot and it's like, hey, uh, what's what's wrong with your leg there? Oh, you know. No, I, I don't. Yeah, I go over and I and I, I kind of poke at it. You know, you know what? I'll I'll grab Graham by the scruff and be like, "She's a mouse god. She can handle it. Whatever it might be, it's probably nothing though." Yeah, but she's gonna end up slowing us down if that gets worse. She won't. If anything, slowing us down was taking that stupid route of yours. <laughs> oh shit! Oh no! Let's let's. <laughs> Come on, let's. We got here on time. Let's not, let's not fight. We need to focus on what's important, making sure this food gets distributed properly. Yeah. So, so Aster tells you the story about how it was unfortunate that um, in the in the winter, um, an animal got into their granary. Uh, it burrowed into it, and so of course it 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 short it short supplied them um, a lot. It was a uh, it was a uh, what not a badger. Um, what's the other thing that's like the size <laughs> a of a badger? Oh God, dude! If that was the same one, actually, yeah, let's do that. You know what? Fuck it. You, you know yeah. what? You know, uh, maybe I'm standing in the corner of that and it's like, yeah, it was some sort of like. It's a really good idea. Or something, and I'm just like, wait, what did it look like? Did it have a scar on its back of its head or something like? Yeah, and it was missing some tough of fur near its belly. Yeah, it looks like it got oh. hit by a sling real bad. Um right in the yeah. ear i love that because that is an, an addendum to your own mistakes earlier yeah, last like, year so, yeah so correct. we look at it and we're just like all right we need to we need to deal with this thing so 
Um, yeah, they gave you they they gave you the food, they gave you the supplies of the food and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, you know, so you know that there's the raccoon is was sighted near Elmas at, at least to deal with this. Mm -hmm. um, it's still the GM's turn. Um, okay. So um, you guys are going to be they they ask you to um, to go after it um, to to secure the town. So um, let's go ahead and do this. So uh, you guys go out into the um, the cold, uh, looking out for this um, this raccoon, right? Yeah. So no big deal. All right. So who wants to be the one on the lookout for this thing? Uh, I'll I'll do it. I'll do scout for it. Okay. I, I kind of oh. look for uh, tracks, dirt. I, I I pick up like a like a ball of dirt and I kind of like put it in my mouth, kind of taste the dirt, mm -hmm. kind kind of sniff it, put my ear to it, to the ground, get like really into it. Hmm. Cool. Um. All right. Yeah. So we are not te testing. Well, um, here's the thing, though, uh, and this is something that I actually failed to do last time to keep this to, uh, into account. This creature is so big, right, that you don't have a ta you don't have a chance to drive it off. Are you? I mean, the only thing, the best thing you could do is hope for is to drive it off, right? Hmm. Um, in order to to actually have like a, a war to like to actually like um, actually I want to I actually want to modify that for a second okay. would it be like us trying to fight a dinosaur yeah um, in fact even to even to like drive it I like the idea and this actually plays into something that you mentioned earlier Henley mm. um, you're going to be you're you're he okay so so let's let's uh slight retcon um so aster um aster brings you over um elmas's every every uh soldier that elmas can can muster uh like their town guard and militia so you're like you're at like 50 50 troops with you to be like this is uh, this is all we can do to to get rid of this raccoon so we're actually doing a large scale a larger scale conflict against this raccoon okay okay Sweet. Nice, I like it. All right. Uh, can I do a militia roll to organize these people? Uh, m sorry, m militarist roll. Sorry, not militia. Uh, it's not. That's not necessary. Um, they they follow. They will follow you. Okay. Right? I don't um, know what militarist like, is used for. Then, if well, not. no, it's it's going to be used for this conflict. Okay. Um, uh, partially. But um, the big the big question here is like, what were you trying to get out of that militarist role? Like, what are you trying to size them up? Like, what are you? Uh, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what militarists can actually do. So like, um, yeah, yeah. At best, yeah. So like, at best, you could do, um, yeah. Like you just you know they're, they're they're town guards, so like they can't really do like they 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 know their way around a weapon and stuff like that. But um. They're not they're not mouse guard, so mm -hmm. they could run and stuff. So it's up to your a good militarist um, actions and stuff to to really get them working. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, um, let's go ahead and and jump into uh, this the scout test, right? Sure. So um, um, just real quickly, what page is the uh, weapons on? Because I'm looking like, through through the book and I can't like find swords it. and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like what? They um, do. Yeah. So so swords and um. Your sword, remember your your sword yeah, so behaves like a halberd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just trying to look up the page. So I it's in the see. conflicts, I believe. Conflicts, okay. Yeah, it's around the conflict section. Okay, thank you. So, all right. Um, so you're gonna make this roll here. So this this represents um we we so that we turn the page of the comic book, and and we see um Graham once again out out front scouting, like listening it up. Yeah. Um. I would like to invoke. Can I invoke a wise while before I roll or after? Is it wise? This is after traits or uh, during. Traits are before. Cool. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, I am, am I getting any help from anybody for scouting? Yep. For uh, scouting. Let's take a look here. Scouting is. Uh, 
Could uh, Pathfinder I? and Hunter. So I'm guessing yep. I'm going to help with Hunter here more than Pathfinder. So because we're actually hunting something. So. W yeah. Would, would the town have a not a hunter's guild, but more like a lodge for hunters, just like people who go out and hunt small game and whatnot? I think a subset of the town guard might be able to help you out with what you want. So could we use that as like a resource? Yeah, as a supplies for this test. Yeah. Okay. Their knowledge of the area and stuff. Sure. Yeah. I'll be helping with Hunter too. Sweet. Cool. So you guys are all out there looking for this raccoon. And where, where with could vengeance, be, um, Eric. With yeah, vengeance. where it could be staying. Yeah. Vengeance definitely keeping you warm in the cold in the, as the cold air and cold winds blow. <laughs> What's the so, uh, ob on this? Is, we're, we're, it's another versus test. It's actually against the raccoon. Okay. Um, oh, God. So, oh, that was terrible. Um, the 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 problem here, what's at stake, is that you guys are out here for a while, and the cold's gonna take its toll. Mm -hmm. So it's going to, I'm gonna force you guys to make a health test. Okay. okay. Oh no. Um, you can also exploit those sixes because you got two of them, by the way, Graham. Yeah. I'm probably gonna spend a fate point to make him. Yeah, I I got four successes, so that's not that good. Um, are you going to do something about this? Yeah, I'm gonna spend a fate point to reroll the sixes. Yeah. Okay. So you roll another right. oh, d6. Nice. Yeah. It keeps exploding. Yeah, roll another you gotta six. go one more. Roll that d6. Aww. Not enough. You tie it. So we're at another tie section. So um, you're gonna get yourself two more checks. Yeah. Do you want to break the tie in its favor? <laughs> um, do you want to so and earn two more checks? Do you want to um, force a tiebreaker roll, or do you want to use a relevant wise here to re-roll a failure? I am going to invoke a wild country wise. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of looking back on my training with Falker uh, about how he was, he was explaining very like in depth about the the nature of giant uh, beasts like this, like raccoons and badgers and whatnot, and uh, kind of pointing out like where they would most likely hide during this kind of climate mm -hmm. and uh he would try to use that knowledge in thinking of like aha okay well maybe it's over here kind of deal okay so you're gonna use your uh your last fate point did that take up did that take up uh all four of my fates uh no i think you have one left then after that, because each of these times you re-roll, like fate, like lucking your roll costs a fate point, re-rolling a failure costs a fate point. So, like, like okay. right now you just spent two on this roll. I know you spent one before, so you spent three. So you, I guess you have one left. No, I didn't. I, uh, I. Oh, that's right. You I didn't. You're, yeah, 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 yeah. You passed it off. You totally passed. It. You're right. I'm sorry. My math no, was bad. Fine. All right, cool. So um, I roll another d6. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Um, cool. And technically, you spent a fate to re to explode, so um, you, that would also Put get a six. One. Yeah, but um, yeah, you win. So you're able to find it, and you, you're able to find it fast enough so that um, you're you're not uh, cold enough and ha and forcing people to, to to being tired out in the cold. So good job. Sweet. Um, nice. So you're able to capture it. Uh, you're able to get the the jump on the raccoon. Oh, well, making which, that health check would have been pretty cool. Yeah, right. Out. So you're able you're able to, to get onto that uh to that raccoon and what so what do you guys want to do here? Like you're you you cap you 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 oh. drive it um are we able, able to, to maybe potentially uh you can kill it. Set it up so that it, it falls into an ambush. Yeah, for sure. That's that could be like what we're gonna be describing narratively. But hmm. like so you have enough troops and forces here to actually do some stuff to this raccoon rather than just drive it off. Mm -hmm. like that like hope like minimal amount of stuff you can actually with with this number of forces to bear you can you can actually try to kill it okay yeah let's let's kill it i suppose we take its hands well i, I was thinking mostly slit its throat but you know it's done enough damage to mouse kind it's time for the time for it to go away permanently well if it doesn't have its hands what is it going to use to eat that's just cruel. Yeah, I would just starve to death out in the wilderness. It's better to just get it over with quickly. So, and... um, here, yeah. So here's what I'm thinking, um, for the raccoon, right? 
um, because it's so much a, a higher higher level. Um, if we want to build, like, if we want to do an ambush, are you thinking about using traps and stuff? Uh, what I'm thinking is, like, it's a big net, and we just pin it down with a net, and all just jump on it and, you know, stab it. Sure. Um, but uh, in order to, to have this net, we're going to need to do a quick little flashback to a resources test to, like, cover the supplies of this uh sure yeah okay well it'd be uh, like launched with two like this is ballistas. this is covering this is covering all of El, like yeah like what El elmas is able to muster for you um so um who's who's making this resource test uh, i mean i guess i can i have the this is a versus test against its nature to show its number the supplies okay yeah i'll make the resources test i will be helping you help with resources so Yep. It's not really other nothing else you can help with. <laughs> okay, gotta be an ob three. Ob three. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can crush that. Yeah, I should be able to. Uh, am I getting two help? Mm-hmm. All right. You're also getting supplies from the town. So three. Wow, Dave. Wow, that sucks. Well, uh, you got a six, or do you want to do a uh, a wise, or what do you want to do? I want to. Uh, hmm. I can't use my fader persona for this. No, you know, I? you know, you know what? I will. Uh, um, I will. It, would you would you say a net is a weapon? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will then. Used by gladiators, it counts as a weapon. I will then uh, um, uh, call upon my wise weapon wise um, for to get the most out of yeah to okay. uh, you know maybe maybe I see like a um, you know they're they're putting together like like just these really shitty ropes and stuff like that and they have like a really shitty rope in the middle and i was like no replace that right now don't don't even use that that's <laughs> that's the weak point of the net he's gonna stretch against that he's gonna break through if you use anything that's shitty like that put the strongest rope in the middle you know um i'm gonna use more well, and they're like do it do what the guys he knows what he's talking about yeah right so um, uh and okay. then I'll, I'll use my fate to do that because i only need to get two. one yeah, one or two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, risk it for the biscuit. Nope, no good. Not enough. Uh, okay. Well, you get it. Um. So, so are you gonna do anything about it? I can't do anything else, right? Uh, no. Um, you why do you have a? You can spend a fate for a luck to reroll a six. Oh, that's what I just did. No, you did, used weapon wise. Oh. Okay. To re-roll a failure. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I just... It's not a big deal if you fail. Uh, uh, that just marked off the last thing I needed for weapon wise, so I've knocked off all four of those things now. Oh, well, keep that in mind. Um, so you give yourself a free test um, in, in a, uh, a skill that was relevant to weapon wise. <laughs> Resources. <laughs> uh, health? Uh, it has to be a skill. Is skill? It's a free pass or fail or uh, attempt at a skill. Attempt at a skill. Okay. So I'll... like learning it, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll think on that a little more. Can I? Yeah, I'll spend sure. another fate. Um... Sure. Um, I'll let you know the consequence of failure here is that you get it. It just it ends up costing you more than what you wanted, and your resources will go down by one. Okay. Game, okay, please. well that happens anyways. That sucks. You guys are not getting lucky, except for uh, for Graham here. Uh, you guys are not getting lucky with that stuff. Okay, so uh, you just you just end up over, over having to overpay uh, to make this work. So your resources uh, stat itself will go down by one now. That's so harsh. Yeah, but mark a mark a failure. Mark On a failure resources? in your resources. Okay. Yeah, they'll just go right back up because you'll be yeah. using resources. Let's again, keep using sure. it. Yeah. All right. Mm. so good work yeah um all right so we have the supplies all right so yeah we can totally uh try to tr take down this raccoon okay 
So, um, okay. I'm trying to think of what I could spend my point on, but yeah, let's go take this thing down. Let's go kill it. Yeah. So this is a fight animal conflict. Okay. Uh, Ellie, would you like to take the reins in this one since you have a lot of health? I suppose I am injured, but uh, what does injured do for this? Uh, minus one D to skills, nature, will, and health. Yeah. Not recovery. Yeah. So I would I lose one dice for this check? Yes, you would. Yeah. This is a fighter test or a hunter test. What is your hunter or fighter at? Um, my hunter is at two right now. And you have six and health, so you'd be rolling at seven die. Because you go down one, right? Well, I get six to start um, with, and then I get two extra die, but yeah. then I lose yeah. one so from seven. my injured. So seven, yeah. I would also allow yeah. militarist to be used here if you want to start learning that. Start learn. I um, if I wanted to, because if you wanted to use militarist, then you could use your nature, or or learn militarist, right? Because I I don't I I presume that Ellie doesn't have militarist, right? She doesn't, but I need one pass for hunter to level it up. Oh, then use hunter. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna use hunter. But oh this doesn't um, go no, you test, th so. this doesn't go what? towards your tests. Oh. Uh, disposition rolls don't go to your tests. What's your goal also? Kill the thing. Kill My the raccoon. My goal was to, oh, kill the raccoon. Yeah, for this. Let's kill the raccoon. Yep. And um, the raccoon's going to be. Because um... if I roll this, I'm rolling six dime. I only have three HP. So at least with you, we have a guaranteed five. Um... Guaranteed six. Well, no, because it goes down one because you're injured. I thought it was just lose a dice to the roll. Is that how that works? It says uh, one D negative one D to skills, nature, will, and health, but not yeah. recovery. Uh, yep. So does that remove from the dice? Or does that remove from the? Yeah. This here? this this re no this removes it. So this is the dice pool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all right then. So you'd be rolling one dice, and then you'd get six HP. So potentially have the opportunity for seven so he's got uh nine yeah. though, so. I, I get help though for this right you do you get help and Ooh. okay <laughs> good luck uh. so you get you get two help you get resources so and then you'll get six on top of that so um, so real, realistically you're rolling, uh, one and two and then one. So you're rolling four die. Oh, uh, quick before she does that roll, I would like to do the lore mouse, uh, roll to see what the raccoon has on him currently. Oh, um, you don't, you know, I don't think you have to cause you did that last time. Yeah, okay. It's the same time. raccoon, right? Same so, so he doesn't yeah, have I'll, his weapons because he's because uh, he's being disarmed. Yeah, I will give you what it is. Let me just find raccoons in the book. It was a spear. Um, it's unlocking, stealing, climbing, and devouring, and they have sharp claws like a spear. Yeah. Would he, I disarmed his sharp claws the last fight? Would they have yeah. grown back? No, they're they're here for this fight. Okay, it's been winter. They've grown back. Yeah, so you'll be rolling for die, basically. All right, go for mm -hmm. it. Okay. And ob one, just because, yeah. It's actually ob zero, but yeah. Whatever. It's ob zero, but yeah. What? Uh, so it's eight. It's ours. Yeah, that's not great. Um, Never lucky. Uh, she only uh, is rolling for uh, a die anyway, but she can explode those uh, two for a fate. Yeah, could, could I use both? Yes. Feet? You just spend and one fate and then you explode. Oh, you want you want to re-roll a failure? I want to do both. All right, so re-roll a failure and then re-roll the successes again, I guess. Okay. 
Um, I wanted to re-roll all my failures and then re-roll success. Oh, you want to spend that. a persona? Yeah. Yeah, all right. That works. So you'll be rolling uh, three dice. Yeah. Three to six greater than four. I think I did that right. Nope. No okay, successes. and I, wow. I did want to also spend a fate to re-roll the two explosions. Yep. Yeah. So oh, one. one. So we go from eight to nine. Yeah. Um. No. So um. So you're injured though, but then Huey's also hungry. So it takes it, it not, one out. Not, so it's not, or uh, Graham is hungry though. So he's it's eight out of eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? Hungry wow. takes away one die from disposition. Oh, well. Um, um, hey, but you have checks. Uh, there are things to do with checks. Um, <laughs> I so, wish to hunt that that fucking weasel again. Uh, okay, cool. So um, we're getting ready. We can now. We're ready to do that stuff. Um, I copied over a list of extra weapons that uh, that are factors into this conflict. I put them underneath the test section. So under like it's nets, traps, and lines, lures, blinds, and camouflage, and fighting weapons. All right. So those are options for you to use on your turn. Could I have okay. used a trait to give myself another dice? Yeah, you can. you totally could. Uh, could I just have brave for this? Yeah. This is Ellie's first time like commanding a battle. Rallying. Yeah. Yeah. Another success, good. Nice, so it's nine out of nine. Okay, good. All right, so uh, once again, attacking is, uh, and uh, so attacking and fainting are the skills that are relevant, are um, fighter, hunter, and militarist. Um, the reason why it's so broad here is because you're fighting an animal with a bunch of, literally you have about 55 troops at your disposal here. Um, so you can like order people around and try to do stuff with you. Um, De defend and um, maneuver are going to be lore mouse and uh, nature. Um, okay. But I think it also allow militarist as well. So that seems to make sense. If if you can argue for that. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Okay. So cool. the halberd so is go ahead and... the halberd is one d to attack and defend, but negative one d to feint and maneuvers. So I got to remember that. Okay, uh, I feel like going last because I'm a cool guy like that. What did you say attacking was? It's a fighter. Uh, fighter, hunter, or militarist. And what's defending in this one now? Uh, lore mouse or nature. And nature is considered um, in your nature to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't automatically lose it. But you can still lose by losing the tests pretty badly. Yeah. So uh, LA just has to pick theirs, and then we can go. Bum bum bum! Fighting raccoon, raccoon revenge. So you caught you 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 caught it into its burrow, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this is where you track it down, and you're you you force into its corner. And so it's going to fight with as much um, tenacity as it can to protect its place. Mm -hmm. But um, this this is it. So let's flip our cards. You just deleted thinking, your card. Actually. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, then let me pick up my cards again. <laughs> I was. What? You put you put a card on the table. I didn't see your cards though. I don't know. I don't you know. You put a card that. on the table and then removed it. So I don't. I don't know. I got. I'm gonna that was, that was. <laughs> yeah. That's some. That's some. Right, that's, well. some that's some. That's some. That's uh... some. That's some Eric Volgaris types of moves right there, you know what I'm saying? I didn't see the cards, <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm still thinking. There were there were three there were three cards on the table. Yeah, I saw three as well. Yeah, I put mine down, but then I changed my mind. Okay, I mean that's fine, and and by that I picked I had to pick up my cards, because it's unfair. You didn't flip them. You did. You did? I did. I flipped, I flipped I the first one. I didn't see it flipped, so. Well. Uh, 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 uh. well no harm in, in me flipping. Yeah, now we're ready, right? 
Okay. Yeah. Lock it in, Ellie. Flip. Eddie, let's go. Uh. Fuck. Okay. Uh, faint first maneuver is independent, so you do damage to it, um, and its maneuver works as well. Uh, maneuver is that it's gonna go. It's gonna retreat as far back into its burrow as it can. Um, and obviously, though, you anticipated that and have traps or whatever, whatever you're gonna do to set that Probably up. Probably fire, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So it's it's trying to it's gonna retreat. It's gonna be clever, and then it's it's gonna go all out. So um, that's that's the plan for it. So we can describe what it looks like turn by turn um, as we go. So maneuver is a feint. It's independent. So both of these things happen. Um, I'm going to get fucking eight successes or uh, I can roll eight dice and whatever I get greater than one is going to be what I add to it. So that's pretty incredible. Nature. The raccoon is going three. Oh, that's not that great. Okay. What do, what do I use for feint again? Um, so fainting could be militarist, hunter, or fighter. Okay, I'm going to give this a good old hunter. I'll help okay. with Militarist. I will help with Fightoir. Sure. Um, and if you want, if you feel like this isn't doing enough for the fiction, describe how you're helping with Militarist and helping with, with Yeah, fighting, I, right? I imagine it's a, it's a lot of like, you know, uh, there's three guard, uh, mouse guards here. Um, yeah. And I'm like, you know, all right, uh, you lot go with the white cape. You lot go with the green cape. And uh, I'll take the biggest ones with me, and we're gonna go stand at the front and just you know make a lot of noise and bang it into the back of the the burrow that we can. So where the Perfect. fire is. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I would be rallying my troops, uh, and like kind of pointing at the uh, raccoon and trying to give like signals of to set up like flanking formations and whatnot. That makes sense. Yeah, I totally in my head imagine you're the type of person who'd be leaning like leading the, the flanking maneuver as as um as LA or no, I'm sorry, you're the one who's like you are the um the bait, right? And the, and then the Ellie's is the, the the group that flanks the raccoon and gets the success. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're yeah, we're firing at its hammer theater. what is it, hammer and anvil? Is that what it is? <laughs> hammer yeah. and anvil, yeah. Well, yeah, so that's or a, yeah, or, or a pincer. Yeah, totally. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, cool. Here. So you, um, so it's trying to drive back and out and outrun you. Okay. Um, uh, and... Supplies. Does our big ass net and troops count as supplies? So that gives one plus one to attack, uh, which you're not doing for feints. You want to do blinds and camouflage. Uh, sets up your blinds on your hunting grounds and use the camouflage to help deceive your quarry. Yep. So um, that's what you want to use. I throw okay. Ellie my cloak because <laughs> it's camouflage. Uh, I think I would actually have some like archers with longbows with like a big um, cloth tied between two arrows to fire it to like land over its head. Oh, cool. Sort of confuse it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I dig that. One and can I use fiery for rallying the troops and all? Oh, totally, totally. And since it's level three, it's a it's just a success. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so we is. just add a one to the end of this. So yeah. do ob. They're independent, so obs they are right. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, technically one because one. this this is a test that you need to get at least one success yeah. on to count as success. And yeah, you do three. Plus. You do three damage to it. Uh, no, well, it's Four. one damage, right? Yeah. So it does oh. down to eleven. Yeah, so you succeed. You, you drive it back. Um, however, um, the the core, the, not the quarters. Um, the burrow is bigger than you thought below, and it has more space. Uh, and however, there's also not as many um, side entrances for you to get into it. So it's impeding um, the, your guys next round, and it can't oh, no. give itself advantage. So um, because it's a faint first an attack, so it doesn't get itself the plus two die. It just has to eat the attack. But um, you are, it's giving you a minus one die here, uh, Graham, because it is impeding you. Okay. okay. But this is a free attack on it. We're getting bottlenecked. Yeah. 
All right, put all. This is like the the, the final boss one. battle room, right? This is like the big the, the big area where all the all, where the thing is. This is its last stand area. So um. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack it with fighter. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be. I'll pro I'd probably uh, ask uh, one of the like little recruit militias to give me like some kind of uh, melee weapon, maybe like a fork, like a pitchfork or something. And I'd be like uh, charging at it with. Well, uh, well, like sword that has those have a those have mechanical benefits. Like having a weapon, if you're using a weapon, like remember you can equip something that gives you a mechanical benefit here. Okay. And so, like for example, yeah. a spear uh, doesn't give you that benefit. And I would say a pitchfork is a spear. Oh, you'd say pitchfork is. Super, a spear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. If you paint, if you paint it as a sword. Let's say you use a sword. Okay. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's giving you an additional die to this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, man, axes yeah. are awesome. I should get an axe. <laughs> the woodcutter's axe. <laughs> oh no, the axe gives extra stuff here. So, um... well, I, I, yeah, I already, I already said. So we're gonna use it as a sword. Okay, so um, he's kind of like just charging at it, uh, yeah, uh, growling and like just trying to act as feral as possible, possibly to intimidate the the raccoon. Even though it's like ten times his own size. <laughs> so are you tapping your nature for this? Yeah, I'm gonna tap my nature. Um, I will. I need a persona to tap my nature, right? Or do I just tap it? No, you need. No, to you have to spend a persona to do it. Yeah, I don't got it. All right. Oh. Um, let's see. So I'd still use fighter. Um, let's see. Can I hunters, use... hunter, militarist, or helpers for people? Yeah, I'm helping with Hunter. Still okay. militarist. I'd, um, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, um, I like the idea that Graham says something to his troops and they're just like, what? And I was like, just loop around and follow his lead. Shoot when he shoots. It's He's he's crazy, but you'll get the picture. Yeah. Uh, I, like the idea, I like the idea you're leading like an archer regiment. Like they all have bows, right? Yeah. To like to fight this thing. Yeah, and one of them just has a sidearm that I said, "Give me that," <laughs> and I'm like running in. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they all have like various weapons, but I feel like the ones that Hugh, um, the way that Huey's helping is that they have the longer ranged ones, providing oh, yeah. covery fire. And uh, yeah. I'm cool. gonna have my troops with slings go for its ear. <laughs> nice. So, so, could I use my regiment that I have as uh, a supply? Yeah. All right. And could I use any of their regiments as supply? No, I think I think that all factors in as that factors extra in. die. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm helping. So. Uh, and there's no uh, ob because it's a nil. No, it's a one. It's an ob one. Mm -hmm. It is an ob it's one. Fine. It's fine. It's, it's an ob it, one, but um. Succeed, but yeah. Yeah, but this is the, remember this goes this goes um un, unopposed though, because mm -hmm. I have nothing else to go against you. So you just do straight up five damage to it. Uh, but you did you, you got a six. So if I, you wanted to change that. Yeah. I'm going to spend my last fate to make that explode. You guys are doing a great job, by the way. You're crushing this. That's because you haven't attacked for two rounds. Well, I, oh, technically I attacked the second round, but you, you trumped it. Oh. It's a rag, it's a raccoon. Of course it's going to faint. So that's uh, an extra damage. So yeah. Yeah. So it's down to five. Yep. Nice. But then it's an attack versus an attack. Yep. So it's versus here, so... Uh, and this is kind of just like the nasty to the bitter end. Yeah. Just remember Barkstone. <laughs> can do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let me know when you're ready. And I'll, All I'll right. So um, I'm going to tap Brave, which will give me an automatic success. Um, I'm rolling six die with my ability. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm getting two helpers plus one for the uh, all my the big the big mice breaking in fucking breaking in Raven's Bane on a on a raccoon. Dude. Yeah, like I I you know I I I, I, I can help with the wise, right? Yeah, you can totally help with the wise. I'm gonna help with uh, predator wise. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I yell I yell to uh, Huey. Remember, if it's bigger than you, go for the grognux. Again. I just completely ignore him and keep going. Now, 
Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I pull out Raven's Bane and I'm just like, you know, say under, uh, under my breath, like, uh, I'm coming home, Sable. <laughs> yeah. Or some shit like that. I don't know. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, and we, we go ham, son. Uh, all right, I'm ready to go. Cool. Let's submit and uh, see what happens. We both do damage. I do five damage to you. And you do four damage to me. Uh, I'm but, going uh, you got to, a bunch of sixes. Yeah, I'm going to do some... Uh, ooh. Does his armor not mitigate that? Oh, because he's piercing. No, no, no. My arm, the armor takes it off one. So. Um, oh, that's true. It does mit It does ablate uh, one point of disposition damage. Um, so I am going to, Eric, with your blessing, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to reroll all those failures. With, with war wise, yeah. Uh, oh, jeez. I uh, what? Are, what's the lies that that lets you do this? Uh, hmm. What time of day is it? I mean, you're. What? What time of day is it? I don't know. You're underground. Night wise, <laughs> it's, then. It's uh, probably night time. Night wise, yeah. then. I will use night wise. Uh, maybe come at it from a dark place that it can't see. Uh. Like the night. Or, uh, wait, would you would you say motivation wise? I'd understand. Uh, no, no, just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to bullshit a bullshit? All right, no. okay. Yeah, I'll use, uh, I think I'd use night wise, yeah. Um, so how Motherfucking many? raccoons fighting for its life. That's his motivation. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Oh, five, D6. Bam. All right, so that's, Whoa. that's three additional successes there. So uh, we that's, tied at the moment. Uh, and then, uh, it's not a versus test. It's oh, just, it just does the damage automatically. Okay, yeah. So that was enough to... Uh, so that's enough to knock five, it out. Six, seven. Yeah. So you kill the raccoon. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, I like the idea that, uh, you know, all the mice start chopping at it from the sides or whatever. And it's, it's you know, flicking, flicking some off and maybe... Like, cause this is the only time it got hurt. Any mice got hurt. So it's all the ones that ran in yeah. with me, right? The, the ones that got hurt, obviously. Well, that's, we have to talk about that, but yeah. Um, and, um, you know, when it lowers its head, I see my chance and I pull out Raven's Bane and I run up and I just, I just drive it straight through its skull. Like, like Zelda doing a down Z move, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> Bring it down, yeah. and I like the idea that Raven's Bane was so heavy, it weighs down its head and, and pierces into the ground underneath as well. Um, yeah. Goes straight through the skull into the ground. And it, and it lands down with a thump. Yeah. Um, um, not to ruin the moment, but it's Link that does the down Z. Whatever. Get off my back. <laughs> you young kids so, and your Pokemans. <laughs> <laughs> my question, nice job, everybody. Mm. Um, but my question for you guys is that you got hit to about half your disposition. So how do you want to divvy up what... So you succeeded at your goal, but obviously the, the raccoon did something about protecting its burrow to you that you have to give up. Um, are you guys all tired from this? Are you guys all... Did, would you rather have less conditions and actually have to deal with the ramifications that now Elmos lost a significant number of its troops? Um, like these are the things I want to talk about um, with you guys. And I'm willing what, to take on. I'm willing to take on a lot of conditions. Like me personally, yeah, me I can too. take on a lot of conditions. Um, I'm willing to take on injured, uh, hungry, You're thirsty. Not You're not injured, but um, no. For for half of that, I would give you guys all tired. If you if you would have lost, so you had, so here's mm. here's actually what I would say. I would be absolutely giving you injured if you actually lost half your disposition but because you had five instead of four i'm gonna say it's just you you like just eat that eat it out so um four and so instead of you're like your armor protected you yeah. right since uh -huh. ellie was leading it maybe she could get tired and angry why angry <laughs> is she like a road rage because she was fighting <laughs> rage? Thing while injured Ellie, Ellie's the sweetest oh, mouse you'll yeah. ever meet, but the moment and she gets behind the wheel of a car, holy shit, does she get angry? Like she invoked fiery, and that, and yeah, that, that's and the book says yeah. she, quick to anger, quick to anger. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's a really good point. I love it. Not a real, yeah, I'm, I'm sold. Can I trade in a condition just to say some of my troops died? 
My troops? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also, I'll trade tiger. Also, I, but I, that's okay. That's that. That's kind of acceptable because, yeah. like, you were also the one who were like doing like the the primary like push down the line. So, yeah. like, that would make sense, right? And because of so many flanks by Ellie, of course, you're the one who's going to take some damage. But like, yeah, it's cool. I it, we also did it by eight because I invoked Brave. I forgot about that. Oh, <laughs> so you so you overkilled it. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to remember that going forward. Right, cool. I, as in well, I didn't, um, I didn't have to use the persona to do it, but like, yeah, you, you overkilled it so much. Now your Raven's Bane is stuck in the skull of the. So, record. um, so so things to remember now. So like, so we're we're ending out with um, Huey being tired, Ellie being tired and angry and um, injured, and injured. Um, well, I mean, just for this for purposes of yeah. this conflict, and then once again, everybody in this conflict. You per conflict, you earn one test per skill attempted per conflict. So, like rolling multiple fighters only means you can take the f only one fighter. Um, but if you did fighter and militarist, then you get mark both of those. Or if you did fighter and then you did a tiebreaker and got health, mark that. Right, like so. That, remember that. So um, I only roll, I only roll diversify once. the skills. Yeah, I only roll yeah. once. So. That's fine. Right, it's cool. My um, hunter but, leveled up to three. By the way, good shit. Yeah. All I right, will like cool. immediately go over to like Graham and lean on him and like put all my weight on him and like be like, uh. Graham hey. kind of like takes a takes a deep breath. Like, uh. Ellie, did you break a tie in your favor today? Um, or is it just Graham? I think it was just Graham. I think it was it just was Graham. Just Graham. Okay, cool. Since you guys are getting a little bit more keen about um, getting checks, you know you can spend checks in the GM turn. Oh. I did um, not know that. Nope. You can spend checks in the GM turn if you accrue them. So, for example, you can spend uh, two checks to recover in the GM turn. You can spend uh, two checks to refresh a level one trait as well. I think that's it. And you can spend four checks to refresh uh, a level two. Yeah, so oh. how do I spend this weapon wise thing again? Can you remind me? I have to pick a weapon yeah. skill. So so think of all the times you've used weapon wise. Um, uh, instructor? Pick a, pick, a relevant, pick a relevant skill. Yeah, you taught fighter, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna put a... So, so you, a pass or a fail. I'm gonna put a fail in fight instructor. Um, you have the opportunity of changing that wise now. Oh, shit. Mm. Or you can keep it as weapon wise. I'll give some thought to that because I'm not entirely sure if I want sure. it. That's like, I lean on that a lot, so. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Maybe uh, it could eventually get expanded to combat wise. He's already war wise. I'm not sure. I don't have war wise. You don't? No. I have weapon wise, lock haven wise, night wise, snake wise, and motivation. Yo, I thought wise. all guard captains have that. Are you sure? No way, dude. You have to have it. I Maybe not. Check. Maybe I'm wrong. I can check. No. Nope. Okay. Did you just check? Guard captains. Um, guard captains. Oh no, you have to take lock lock haven wise or matriarch wise as one of your wises. Yeah, I took that's lock right. Haven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, nope, that's matriarch fine. Matriarch wise. <laughs> yeah. You know cool. the matriarch really likes that one. Just saying. Well, yeah, like you know, you are you are like one of the subordinates. Like, there's no one between you and Gwendolyn in terms of hierarchy, mm -hmm. right? So, like, something I'm intending to do more in this session and or in this um, year going forward mm -hmm. is you being a guard captain, okay, especially great. now that the other one has retired. There's more work on your shoulders to do, sure, right? Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. you have a, you have an incentive to getting one elected. So doing more administrative work and like those types of things that you have to do that are boring, like the boring paperwork. I, I like job. the I like the idea that and, that my my uh, former uh, mentor, aka the other guard captain, yeah. uh, did a lot of the paperworky stuff, and I was mostly just walking around doing like all the stuff that well, I. Well, yeah, liked, so. well, he's super old, so he probably never left Lockhaven in forever, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So of course he was just doing that stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So it makes sense that now you have to kind of like 
take that over again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for, for indulging me for that. But um, yeah, so that was good. That was a great conflict. By the way, both of those conflicts today, you guys were killing it. Uh, they were they went by really fast, I think, and like in terms of like pretty smooth, uh, it, the smoothness uh, factor was good. So um, we're getting a lot better at it. So I just want to say thank you. Oh, okay, great. great. Um, let's do uh, let's do some checks. What do you want to do with the players' turn? I would like to beckon Huey over to help me fix my leg <laughs> <laughs> because I've been walking on it all day. And now it's looking all kind of swollen and purple and gross and really yeah. bad. It's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> so do you I, have healer, I, Huey? I do, yeah. I like the idea I that... Um... <laughs> I have healer. She was going to like in, use it herself, but like have, like have try to heal it herself, but have Huey help. It's an ob3 test for a healer attempt to do it. Oh, you're going to do it yourself, but have him help? Yeah, I have sure. four in healer. Do you want to use your own supplies on this? Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I said, it's it's an ob three test for this to happen. Yeah. So far. And Graham's right there. Does he do anything? Graham. Graham. Uh, oh God. Do, do I have healer? That's that's. If you don't have healer, do you have a wise? Mm. Wild country wise, yeah. you know, you might want to treat injuries when you're out in the yeah. wild, okay. like so spring I'll, legs. I'll, I'll invoke uh, wild country wise. Uh, you can only really do that if you fail a roll, right? Or can you do it when you're helping someone? You can help with it. Hmm. What What are the uh, helpers for a healer? Oh, wait, no, I got healer. I can help with healer. Okay. I, I, I didn't see it. I do it. I have healer three. Okay, cool. So that's three. <laughs> Just rub some dirt in it. <laughs> what you, no. Clearly, no, you, have some to, dirt in. you have to... Rub uh don't rub dirt in it. That's awful. I, I pull out like this little like little little plant and and I, I break the uh I don't know where I was keeping it. I break the the pot and the the plant if you rub it on the wound uh it's like an aloe vera. <laughs> well, it, it, it maybe it like kind of numbs the uh area kind of deal. Ah, the old and, tiger bomb plant. Yeah, no. Everywhere. Oh, I needed one of those. Thanks. And then <laughs> just I hand it to her and then it's like, "All right, so uh uh, maybe we need a splint. Does it? Does it? Does anyone got? Uh, anyone got any wood? <laughs> Ellie just like points at some sticks on the ground nearby, while right. she's like trying to like fix her own leg. All right, I can do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's write this. Let's write this leg. We we we. Oh, how wait? How long has it been since she broke it? Or sprained it? Not that long. Right. We may have to rebreak it and reset it. No, it hasn't been that long. It's like a day and a half. Not even that. Yeah, that's fine. Le at least less than a week. Yeah. So um, let's do it. Okay. Ob three. It's a health test, yeah. Ob healer. three health test. A uh, healer test. Yeah. Let's see. <sighs> Good Got stuff. it. Yeah. You're no longer um Yeah, you're no longer injured. And you, you're able to bypass the the recovery order because you use healer for that. So good yeah. job. Whew. Nicely done. Thanks, guys. And she sort of like wobbles and stumbles a bit as she gets herself back up. Graham pulls out pulls out an arrow and he like breaks the tip of it, like lollipop size wise here he's he's a lollipop for being such a good patient <laughs> that would actually make ellie giggle yeah nicely done cool so that was your that was your test right yeah. now you also um you are still a uh, angry yeah um I'm angry <laughs> okay so See, you're, this is nice. This is really good. Um, so I keep forgetting because I've been reading Torchbearer again, and the conditions are far more brutal in Torchbearer. Yeah, they don't so. have they don't have they don't have angry in Torchbearer. Mm -hmm. They have afraid, and when you're afraid, you cannot get help from people. 
and you cannot do beginners. Yeah, it's, dun it's, oh, uh, it's, darkest, it's dungeon. darkest Dungeon. Yeah. It's oh, Darkest God. Dungeon, so it's like, it's, ba it's basically Mascar Darkest Dungeon, only obviously no get, Mascar. Get, but get like, that poultice away from me. But imagine, so like the way it works, the way the game works is like we're playing Mascar, but instead of having a player's turn, GM turn, it's that every four moves that you make, you get a condition. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Period. Now, you mentioned something to me the other day. Uh, it's awesome. Eric, but uh, anyways, yeah. About uh, fixing my armor to remove negative effects from it. Yes. Uh, so um, what, so what right I... now it's clumsy and stuff. Yeah. So what, is, uh, what does that do exactly? Just an armor test to, to remove that. I mean, what does clumsy do? So, cl um, you, so if you're wearing armor, mm -hmm. it takes a minus, you take a minus one die to recovering because it's heavy. Okay, yeah. Right, and if it's um, I think clumsy gives you. I have, I have to look at heavy armor exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, bah, 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 bah. Heavy armor, clumsy minus. Oh, it gives you a minus one die to maneuver tests. Maneuver it gives tests? you a minus one. So heavy armor gives you a minus one die to maneuver tests. A minus one die to scout or nature for sneaking or hiding, and a minus and it's heavy, which gives you a minus one die to health tests. To resist fatigue. Oh, that's not so bad. So you can either remove. So what I'm saying is that you can spend a check to remove mm. clumsy or heavy, and basically like customize your armor for yourself. Uh, I'm which thinking is something you can do at this point. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking removing heavy we might be good because that's the health checks one, right? I'm not so yeah. worried about stealthing because that doesn't seem like it's in my nature anyway. Uh, yeah. So we can sure. do that or the other one that i'm thinking about doing is uh testing my circles in this town and seeing if i can um uh what time did you say it was it was uh el, el, what, what el moss el moss el, elm moss yeah yeah uh like an elm tree yeah um so maybe i want to uh uh see if i can uh you know what, let's do the armor thing. I don't know what to do with the thing. So let's, instead of fucking around, let's just do armor. Sure. Um, all right. Uh, so this is going to be an armor test. Mm -hmm. This should be a pretty, this should be a moderately difficult armor test. Mm -hmm. um, I am imagining it. I mean, I mean, look it up, but I think it's going to be an ob three. Okay. Um, you're looking at. Um, yeah, it's ob three. Eric. So, How would you say about me using Defender as a trait here? Um, what I would say is, tell me what that fictionally looks like. So, so you know, that's my answer to most of those questions, dude. Yeah, I want you to presumptively assume that it's possible by you describing it. That's All how right. Legends of the Guardwise works with everything. So I'm looking at this, yeah. you know, I take off the armor and I'm sitting, I'm sitting there. Maybe the the town has allowed me to use their like smithing station for whatever reason. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, huh. I'm looking at it. I I'm inspecting the armor, you know, going over with a the, with the fine tooth comb. And then I, I look in the back and like right in the, the chain mail, there's like a spot where I got shot in the back from Graham. And I'm looking at him just like, oh, normally I never have my back exposed to the enemy because that's just bad swordsmanship. But Graham is in the party. <laughs> I had forgotten about that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sort of looking at him and I'm just like, if I reduce the weight from the back, potentially. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think this will work. If I reinforce the back, it means that from whatever angle attacks come from, I'll be able to defend people close by. Hmm. <laughs> Graham walks up and he's like, maybe you'll need more chain mail. Get out of here. Tighter links. Get out of here. Maybe a hood. <laughs> no, get out of here. And he like walks away. He just like slinks out the front door. Okay, all right, whatever. Just said my piece. Uh, yeah. So if you allow me, I'll use uh, defender. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You. Right. You have my blessing. Thank you, Eric. I assume no one's gonna help because no one else has it. Uh, so can I use? Is there uh, anything I can help with? I, um, uh, Smith, scientist, or laborer. Well, Smith and yep. armor, and the, that sounds like the same thing to me, but okay. Um, 
So armor's for weapons. Would you armor. allow me to get a plus? Smith is for like horseshoes and shit. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Would you allow me to get a plus one for using the smithery? Um, no. no? Okay. No. Yeah. The fact that they have a smithery gives you the ability to make this test. Wait, it was all three, right? So no. Yep. Uh, uh, do you have a fate? I do have a fate. Yeah. You can reroll those two sixes, or wise. Good. Good. I'm gonna use brave. Uh. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, I'll I'll roll those two sixes using the last fate that I have. Reroll in. All right. Four. Got it. Yeah. Yep. So you're able to fix your armor. Okay, cool. I'll remove that last fate then. Uh, so that means that the heavy armor is light. No. No, I mean it's, it's yeah, but it's it's just, it's it loses the heavy condition to it. Okay, so what conditions does it have? So it won't reduce have? your. I'll just write the conditions down. That it, it still has it still has clumsy, which gives you a minus one die to maneuver tests, and a minus one die uh, to scout or nature tests for scouting and hiding and being stealthy. Okay, cool, cool. I'll just leave clumsy in there. Cool. That's my check. Perfect. Cool. Graham, you have three checks. Oh boy. Um I do want to learn. You are hungry, right? I am hungry. So I guess I could spend a check to go to the local tavern, eat, and hit on some beautiful mouse sets. Yeah, that's an op one resources test. Okay. <laughs> so and because you're able to get here with the supplies, um, the short I would say the shortage would have been a factor here in making it up to, but it's not because you 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 did your your job. Sweet. Okay, so nice work, everybody. This was a really good mission. You guys did you did you did stuff right today. We <laughs> you succeeded, we, we which didn't is weird. We didn't die. Only a few random mice did. Random That's mice weird. don't hate you. Like things are things are looking up for you Dude, guys. Inside a riot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone you over help? in Ivydale suddenly feels a great burden lifted off their shoulder. It's weird. Yeah. People can help with resources if they want to. Anyone want to help with resources? Mm. Yeah, uh, sure. Go get, go get food and hit. A oh, yes. Ha. Ellie. My dependable. Wing girl. Mm. I'm I'm thinking she's just like already in the bar, like sitting there looking kind of grumpy. <laughs> I, I maybe maybe I'm like passed out on the table, just been like oh. <laughs> with, with like my exposed uh purse or something like that. No one would steal from a mouse guard aside from Graham. Uh, oh. so <laughs> I'll I'll pilfer a few coins from his purse. Yeah. So it's two. And ob one. Got it. Sweet. Cool. No longer hungry. Great. Okay, so I got two more checks. Um. You want to learn anything? Yeah. What do you want to learn? I think I want to. Like Huey just like wakes up. And he's like, I want to learn something. I have a vast wealth of knowledge. You little shit. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So that was uh, that was one of your checks. You have two more. Yeah. I, I wanna. I want to up my survivalist. What is it? What level? It's at four right now. Yeah, you're on your own. I can't help you there. Can I? Can I call on? You can circle somebody to teach you. Can I circle Falker, my mentor? He <laughs> he's just like I never left you. For some reason, I mentioned him as Zoro. You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, okay. I, normally, normally, I would say this would be pretty difficult. But as a mouse who's literally a survivalist, them showing up randomly seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, you sit down on a so, bench, uh, just like, what's Falco doing? And he's like, I don't know. Why don't you ask him? And he's sitting next to you, and he's like, hey, fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck! What the fuck? You fucking dick. That's exactly yeah. how that yeah. whole thing would go. Falco makes Huey seem like a teddy bear, huh. honestly. Acting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was actually like a shrub the whole time <laughs> in town. It's like, wait, were you there for the raccoons? Yeah. <laughs> wait, were you random mouse number three? Damn it. I need to get better. Acting. <laughs> yeah, so he's a um he's a high is he he's not this is he the same rank as you? Uh I would say 
Like you're no slouch. You're 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 above a guard's mouse, right? You're a patrol. Yeah. You're a patrol guard. Um, now he's probably a patrol leader. Yeah. So he's probably one higher. So this you're looking at uh, an ob three. Can test. he really lead from the shadows, though, Aaron? People can help you for this test, though. But circles help circles. Okay. It's not three tests. They tried to um, promote him, but they just couldn't find him. I like the idea that I walk past him. It's like, hey, Volker. The, like, the obvious, I think hey, the obvious right? can, the, <laughs> I feel that like the question here isn't if you find him. The question is whether or not if you find him, are you mad? <laughs> so <laughs> that he was here the whole time, never announcing himself. Right. So oh. I think that's the question. So you're, you're risking angry here oh I think. He, sweet okay so um am i gonna get any help with yeah this? i mean i probably know for so like, there's a good chance yeah. that, like i like the idea that he's just like you know wait you didn't know Falker was here the whole time <laughs> what are you an idiot <laughs> what are you like he was standing behind you like literally most of the time that you were in this party wait do he, he even introduced himself and you ignored him <laughs> oh that guy i could recognize him Okay, I like the idea so, that he's just he just slicks some paint off his off his face. He's like he was the same color as the tree behind him. <laughs> and he's just perfectly just amused. Gr Graham kind of like crosses his, his uh, arms, like I bet. Ah, <laughs> uh, he usually repressed those memories. He was always fucking. He was always a dick. Always taking me outside the scent border and leaving me. I kept falling for the same damn trick. Well, I mean. It's one way of raising a mile, uh, raising a tender paw, so. Ooh, you failed. <laughs> Getting angry. So, of course, he's, he's here, and you're angry at seeing him. I like that. You know what it is? It's like, help me. I need to learn something. It's like, hey, uh, Falco, you want to go have a drink? He's like, yeah. <laughs> we just, like, we moved Falco. <laughs> cool. Um... <laughs> So you circle them up, and then you can spend your last check to get your uh, the free survivalist test. This is okay. the hard part of having really high skills, like skills higher than a four, is that finding people to actually do this for you really kind of takes two tests. Unless, unless you want to learn. Like, unless we describe the time of you actually being with them, right? Yeah. Okay, so I spent one check to circle yeah. them up. I'm spending another check to learn my survival. Yep. Um, because I feel like that needs to be a little bit higher. Here's your survival check. Get your dad a beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give so, my dad a beer. <laughs> and I'm your yeah. dad, and son. <laughs> cool. All right. Um. So, um. Let's 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 come up with what this is gonna look like, right? Um. I wouldn't throw just any mouse out into the wilderness unless it was this, my own kin. <gasps> is this a, so? This is like an this is is this an instructor test? Uh, I, yeah, I guess he would be, yeah, he would be instructing me on, uh, jeez, which is, is going to be hard because my nature is five. Uh, mm, I don't even think that's possible. <laughs> no, that doesn't make sense. It's that you have to test survival because you're making this role for this. So the question is whether or not this survival test, you know what it is? This, here's how we're going to do, here's how we're playing it. Here's how, whether or not. <laughs> he walks uh, him out into the forest to have that conversation and disappears. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> no, it, it's a versus test. It's a versus test of your, of, he's going to roll his instructor and you're going to roll your existing survivalist. And if his instructor wins, then you get, um, then you actually get a lesson. Sweet. Or the other way around is it, if your survivalist wins, you get your lesson. Come okay. find me, kid. I'm in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> he like crosses his arms. Oh, what a dick. All I wanted was maybe a story or some book learning, but no. So yeah, do we do we want to say it's higher? Like do do we want to say that he has he has to roll a higher instructor than you? Or do you have to roll a higher survivalist? I have to I think it would be much more difficult if I had to roll uh and much more rewarding if Here's I had to roll higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that makes sense. Here's what's at stake. If you roll lower than him, you have you get a free mark of a failure of survivalist, right? Because you tested survivalist. Mm -hmm. But if you succeed, you have your choice of success or failure. Okay. Right. Just like any free instructor. All right. All right. So yeah. So this is like a um, he takes you out to like outside the town and like maybe it's actually near the where the raccoon was and like talks about burrows and stuff in the winter, as we um 
We roll. All right, I got two, which ain't great. Young Graham, all you need to uh, visualize is a hole in the ground. <laughs> Mark your scent upon the entrance. That way the beast knows that you've come and will be expecting you. What? You are making no sense, Falker. Why would I pee on his doorstep? It's like a calling card. You can't steal a, a beast's heart without... <laughs> this I'm so confused. Uh, Persona 5 so, is a good game. There. So, is my ob 2? Because you rolled 2? Yes, or... you have to be an ob 2. Correct. Oh, Damn. It's high. Um, do you have anything left for a wise? to? to re no, you're out. You're tapped out. Okay, oh. so then we... Oh, no. Tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. Yeah, let's do it. Health versus health, right? Uh, yep, health versus... No, it's actually health versus will, because he's teaching you. Oh, so is it his health or my will? Um, your health. No, it's your health and his will. Okay. The older Amias is, the more will he has. Just, just FYI. One success. Uh, it's possible. Oh, how many dice did he have? Five. Five. <laughs> and I rolled one success, dude. Uh, my dice, my dice have betrayed me today. Just like the trash panda we fought. You got it. You win. Aha. Mark that. Mark that successful survival. Da, 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 da. Cool. All right then. Um, that's that's the last check for the today, and now we do experience. Hell yeah. All right. So, um, in the Arthur turn, um, of course, we have to look at our beliefs and see if we did an action in accordance to our beliefs today. If you did, you earn a fate point. So let's go around the uh, the table and, and see that. So Graham, what was your belief, and did you was there a time where you made a roll in accordance to it? People have their reasons for their actions. It's my job to understand them. I don't think there was an opportunity to roll in... It was, in it was a lot of combat-focused stuff, right? So it Yeah. Was tra well, it was, yeah, the tr it was traveling and uh, tr uh, and then, then helping the raccoon. It was conflict-focused. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. very conflict-focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Okay. All right, so not so much. Um, yeah. Kika? Sometimes the right thing to do isn't always clear. A guard's mouse needs to be wise and act correctly for the good of mouse kind. Knowledge and experience pave the path to wisdom. Do you think uh, you did something in accordance to that? Yeah, with, um, well, she's never really done pathfinding before, and she pushed through on that for the last stretch to get to town. Despite having... I would think more to the tune of you led your first uh, that too. fight more than anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. that too. She <laughs> needed to know what to do. Yeah, she's learning. With her new white and blue cloak. Yeah, so okay. On it. So, so fate point. And now what about uh, you, Henley? What about Huey? Evil prevails if good mice do nothing. I think... Fucking up that uh, and uh, uh, trash panda was the way to go. Yep. Okay. Cool. What's that? That's a fate. Uh, fate. Fate point for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, next up is is our instincts. Did our instincts come into play? Graham. Um, to be the best guards mouse possible, I must never hesitate to throw myself into new situations, which I can learn from. Yeah. Well, Climb that. Did, yeah. Climb that uh, log. Yeah. And um, Graham, I would say you did, but it just was the same raccoon before, so yeah, that counts though. You you pushed for that, so I would get I would consider you get fade for that as well. Yay! And um, I shall not hesitate in life of combat, as they should be treated as the same thing. I stabbed a raccoon in the face. Yep. Okay. Uh, then our goals. Uh, fate point if you work towards your goal. Persona point if you accomplished it. Uh, uphold the image of a god, deliver the grain on time. Get the grain to Elmas with my survival skills, and I led... Personas. The... I, I think... Yeah. I yeah. Deliver the grain on time. Graham, 
perfect. She yeah. The fight because he fucked up and, you know, let us into a, a, a branch instead. <laughs> no. He, he resolved his goal. Remember, resolving your goal can, doesn't mean it has to resolve successfully. Can you resolve so. your goal while also throwing it in the toilet and getting two checks? Yeah. So, for example, if you would have <laughs> fucked up, no. If, if your goal, if your goal was to be like deliver the the food on time or something like that, and you and it's impossible, but you made work towards it, it was still like resolved, right? Mm -hmm. It was completed, but it just wasn't resolved in the way you wanted to. Yeah. And so now you have to go to Elmos and explain to these starving mice how you lost the cart, right? And like, so you still get experience. There's a town so. mayor, I swear. Yeah, it's cool. So um, <laughs> it was all Ellie's fault. <laughs> Point to the new what? Guy. It's a, you, 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 you handle this. Runs away. <laughs> Have you seen how dirty her cloak is? She lost it. No. Yeah, she totally lost it. Oh. Look at my cloak. It's nice and dirty. It's always been dirty. Never been washed. What, what was your goal, Ellie? It was just to deliver the grain on time. Okay. Yeah. Easy. So you were able. You were all able to avoid calamity. Nice work. Oops, there goes gravity. Nice. Uh... Mom spaghetti. <laughs> Hands are sweaty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All cool. right, perfect, guys. I think that pretty much sums up an episode. So let's uh, let's do some shout outs. Uh, there's a couple other things, my dude. Oh yeah, what's that? MVP. Oh yes. Most valuable, most valuable mouse today. MVM. Um, I think I think most valuable mouse. Um, I'm gonna nominate Graham for yeah. for doing some doing work today. But um, what do we think? Only one mouse can get it today. Um, I think. Honestly, it probably might be Graham. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the roles. So we had the two attacks. Huey crushed the trash panda, though. Oh, yeah, but that thing was already dead by the time I got to, to it anyway. So um, I think I think um, not uh, like spreading around the actual like... Um, uh, what was it? We were fighting something and you spread your... You let... Ellie have a a chance to roll in oh, a conflict. We, we were doing versus spring. Oh, I could yeah. Have, yeah. I could have spent a fate and just made that last dice explode. That's a really good point. Uh, so actually, yeah, instead of being MVP, you might your team worker. Your that would make more sense for you being workhorse. Yeah. Your your team worker because of all of your your generous checks uh, and and helping. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Then so means maybe MVP. then then MVP would go to who who gets MVP today? Then I would say Ellie because she she fought a giant raccoon yeah. with a busted leg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ellie MVP. Thank and then you. last one is embodiment. Uh, two people can get embodiment if we if um, should we should have it. MVP today. is fate or persona. Persona. These are all persona, persona. rewards. Yeah, they're all persona. Yeah. Um, does anybody get embodiment today? Huey. <laughs> yeah, I think Huey gets embodiment. Yeah. Oh. Doing Dark Souls style uh. finishing move on that trash panda. Yeah. I mean, is it really embodiment if I just hit a thing with a sword? But the, I, no, the, but the, the log rolling over the, our igloo, like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Using us exactly. out of there and then, like, it zooms out and we're gone. Show, showing your bravery yeah. in, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the, yeah. So there's and two you major got a wife, gosh darn it. That was yeah. the last episode. It's a it's a wedding present. It's a wedding wedding present. present. Okay, here's your persona, honey. Thanks, darling. Okay. I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> cool. All right then. All right. Um, now that's it, right, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's just, let's do some shout outs, Mister. Let's start off with Mrs. Zippy. <laughs> what up, sir? How you doing? Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about your accomplishments on the internet. Tell me about them. Oh, I guess uh, I guess uh, I do uh, variety streaming here on Twitch. Uh, I've been doing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, grinding up to that sweet, sweet uh, Stormblood content. Every Monday, we do MS-DOS Mondays, where we choose a game uh, from, I would say, pre-XP days. Mm -hmm. uh and we we sit down and we kind of truck through them we are streaming tomorrow uh at 8 p.m central the final game of the zork ms dos 
uh, anthology, which is Zork Zero. And after the Monday after that, we will be starting Elder Scrolls One Arena. Nice. All right. Um, let's go to Kika for the hot goss. Kika, tell me about the hot goss. The what? Hot goss. Hot scoops. The news. Oh, okay. I've never heard that before. Really? Really? Hmm. I thought you were an. I thought you were a video game journalist, and you don't know the hot scoops. Oh my god, young I people. Cover yeah. specifically Dota two content. Only Dota two. Specifically. 2. Yeah. All right, I'll let you. But yeah, this I one. am Kika. I do some esports journal specifically catered to Dota two. I um, also stream on Twitch. I nice. stream old school RPGs and I voice act every single character in the game. After I finish Final Fantasy nine, I will be streaming through Tales of Symphonia. Yes. I have almost four octaves of vocal range, so that helps out a lot. I haven't really been streaming that much lately because I got my wisdom teeth out, my final three wisdom teeth out last Wednesday. So I've just been making sure I'm recovering fine from that so I don't get dry socket. Mm -hmm. And I also do cosplay construction occasionally. And yeah. Nice. Also follow, find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash KikaVO. I do a lot of interacting there. Okay. And uh, last but not least, let's go over to our lovely GM, the man who puts it all together inside of his brain and spews it out of his mouth hole for us to enjoy. Mr. Eric Volgaris, how you doing, sir? That's a pretty gross picture. Well, Speaking I mean, like pictures. you feed us like a mother bird, you know? I do. I just, I, I think about things and then I uh, just throw uh, it up uh, in your mouth. Uh, uh, uh. Roll, roll constitution. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was that thing that you uh, told him? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I just want to, yeah. Oh, God. Sorry. Mama bird. No. <laughs> mama, bird. mama bird problems. Yeah. yeah. Tell yeah. me about yourself. Were you, were you saying something, Zippy? Oh. oh, it was uh, Eric put the pastrami in your mommy vulgaris. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm the internet celebrity, uh, the one and only Eric vulgaris on the internet. I uh, I do a lot of role playing game streams. Um, Sundays is my burning wheel and then mouse guard here. Um, so I, I do a lot of stuff with these style of systems and games. Uh, in addition to that, I do an open story game um, thing on Tuesday nights where I just play um, one shot story game stuff so like gm list style games where there's not any dice and it's just these kind of like cool little rule system games are fun um we need to play other than that together yeah i mean that i also do some mini painting now so that's fun um but i fucking love mouse guard and today was so much fun guys so thanks for hanging out chat uh, i saw a lot of good faces here today and um thank you so much players you guys were incredible today uh, this was really good this was a very solid session um in nice. my mind and ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. If you haven't already done so, consider following the channel. And if you're feeling real saucy, why not subscribe and get access to my cock. Spread that all subscribe. over Twitch. And as it is right now, you get instant access to the to the VODs that we have on the channel too, because that's locked behind a paywall now. Sorry. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, let's talk about what's happening. Um, this week, there's no uh, Yonder or... LA at night because our GM is moving houses. Um, but, uh, you know, next week uh, we're moving LA at night to Wednesday and it's going to be on the front page of Twitch. So that's nice. Oh, cool. um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to get some extra love there. And, yeah, other than that, it's business as usual. Check out the schedule if you want to find out what all the moves have been done. Everything's up to date there. So you can check that shit out. And um, yeah, uh, I'm talking to Eric. We're probably gonna probably gonna have him on for an episode of the um, drawing board, and maybe he can run through what he does when he sets up a mouse guard game. You know, that'd be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so I'm a GM who hates prep. Mouse, I love mouse guard prep. Yeah. So all right, yeah, well, mate, I, I'm I, really excited to share that. I hate prep too. I never prep unless it's like Me building too. a cool character. I'll build a cool character yeah. any day. Um, so yeah. Yeah, um, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in a few hours for the morning stream. But other than that, have a good night. Bye-bye. See you guys.